And good morning. Uh, I'm actually up here in the top corner. Uh, you may or may not be able to see me right imme immediately. Uh, sorry for the delay going live, but I believe we are on track now. And let's see. So we're going to get on the road here and hopefully you will be able to see stuff that I'm doing. And I have my nifty little YouTube chat. So hello to everyone. Uh, anyone, everyone who's joined. If you are out there, feel free to say hello in the chat. And uh, I will shout out right back. Oh, man, we got. Uh, let's see if this works. Yeah. Hey, Hussein. I, I don't know that I'm saying your name right now. I apologize. But uh, good morning. How's the audio sounding? Uh, does everything seem okay? Oh, and good afternoon. <laughs> so this, uh, this stream is going to be a little bit different. Um, I am driving my Tesla Model X instead of the coach so you'll see a lot quicker action one way or the other uh, steering activity braking acceleration and uh, you'll see the car drive itself quite a bit because the autopilot in Tesla is really quite good uh, you do have to be attentive the whole time so like right now Oh, no, it doesn't need to stop for that light, so I just let it know. Now, it's going to... Yep, so it's stopping for this light. All on its own. You can't see me right now. And now I'm telling it it's okay to go because it's green. It sees the green and red, uh, but it requests confirmation right now in this version of software. Hey, thanks very much uh, for confirming the sound. We're going to slide over here and hit the interstate. Oh, I guess I have to hit begin trip over here. Yep. Whew. I got a lot of stuff in the back, so um, things are going to be sliding around a bit. And my hotspot just slid off the dash. No harm. All right, I'm going to set that down here. And here. So, ah, I was saying, um, no, we're actually not in Texas right now. We are in Las Vegas. Um, we left. Texas on Thanksgiving Day here in the US, which was November like I don't know, 25th, 26th, something like that, somewhere toward the end of November, and uh, made our way back to Las Vegas. And we've been in Vegas ever since. As a matter of fact, um, we bought a new site here at the Motor Coach Resort that we used to own at. Um, so we've got that and we've been hanging out there and not really doing much here in Vegas, of course, because of the pandemic. Uh, although we were able to get both of us uh, vaccinated. So now we're, we got our second shot this past Monday and I'm just going to pass this car. Come back down to normal speed. I thought that lane ended, so that's why I wanted to get past him. Now 
actually I'm going to come way on down to normal speed let the car take over <laughs> yeah no worries um, yeah D uh, David and Brenda are still in Texas so that's that's probably who you were thinking of and we were actually in Texas to meet up with them and hang out um, but the park there just didn't work out for us so we, we decided to come back west here in Las Vegas You might catch a glimpse of me in the light here. Uh, maybe not. I promise you I'm, a, I'm up in the top right corner. Oh. Alright, so I'm going to put the car in range mode. Ah, driving. Range mode. Whew. kind of boring once uh, you get cruise control set at normal speeds. <laughs> uh, looks like my speed on there isn't working for some reason. Well, that's unfortunate. Refresh that, see if that helps. Hey, no worries. Uh, enjoy your walk and uh, glad you made it back safe from uh, your night shift. We'll see you when you come back. Well, it looks like my position's updating, but not my speed. That's unfortunate. I will fix that momentarily. <laughs> so, uh, Lenan is back home at the coach with the, the critter kids, and uh, Fiona had her dental done yesterday, day before, day before yesterday, and um, she had some teeth extractions while she was under and had her nails cut up real nice and close, and uh, we're still, still waiting on that uh, bountiful number two to occur. Yeah, her dental was done Thursday. I'm trying to think where's going to be a good place to pull off just for a quick stop to fix the speed limit speedometer on the stream here. I don't know if you can see me when these lights pass over or not. Maybe not so much. And I got something in the back that is making noise and really annoying. Thank you. 
yeah, that, that little click click is going to drive me nuts. I think this exit is a quick off and on. Uh, Valley Verde. I'll do Stephanie. Thanks, sweetie. My wife reminded me that Stephanie, she thinks, has an easy off and on, or on and off. So I'm just going to drop off here for just, or not drop offline, but um, get off this exit and uh, try to fix the speedometer and also the thing that's clicking in the back. You know what, I'm going to go over here to the right and just park in this uh, little ma uh, mall parking lot area. It'll take me a little bit longer to get back to the road, but I think I like that better than sitting on the on-ramp. Okay. Let me see. Maybe it's this that's not reporting. Should be updating every 10 seconds. My X integration hasn't fired. Oh yeah, there it is, 99. Okay, so that's good. It's also tough to know what's going on because I have to troubleshoot it while I'm stopped. And while I'm stopped, I'm not sending speed signals. Oh no. That's unfortunate. Yeah, I'm not sure if, I mean, I haven't changed anything, but I don't know where the speed issue is. It's a little odd. I'm almost thinking 
it's my uh, the transmitter isn't sending the speed correctly it almost has to be that velocity Yeah, unfortunately, I don't know that that's going to work for me while I'm driving here. I know what I can do. I can add the X's speed on the right-hand side. See if that, I mean, that'll at least be something. to send that data through. Almost done. And then I'll be right back on the road. Oh, oh yeah, there is velocity. Okay, good. change come back over here refresh this okay so the very next update which should be in the next few seconds there we go okay now we have the excess speed now unfortunately the excess speed won't update except every uh, one minute thereabouts I think that's the way the update frequency I saw last night so we'll have to see um, if it does that again but at least with that you might get some semblance of my velocity and unfortunately it doesn't look like I mean I, I didn't change anything so um, I guess I'm not surprised that my other transmitters speed didn't come through and I don't know if you heard that little bing but that's the oh I didn't check the I didn't check the darn thing in the back it's vibrating so I'll pull up into here oh man All right, I'll be right back. I gotta jump in the back and uh, check on what's vibrating and rattling. Hey, you can almost see me. I'm taking the mic off while I'm doing that. I don't didn't bring my wireless pack.
Okay. I believe that is solved. I'm trying to think what would cause it to be 0.1 miles an hour. No matter what speed I'm doing. Um... made it better or worse. Anyway, getting back on the interstate. It is really easy to lose track of how fast you're going in this thing. And it's also really easy to forget that not other cars have the same level of acceleration when you're, you've had it for so long. Zero point seven miles per hour. Let me think about that. Why would, would that? See, the car just did that lane change, by the way. So, my lovely wife is asking where I'm stopping to charge. Uh, the first charge stop will be in Kingman, Arizona. Uh, there's a supercharger there right outside of Carl's Jr. And um, I don't recall exactly how long I need to be there. And I don't have it up on screen right now. So um, I'm going to pass this guy. Well, lots of construction. We haven't been over here in a while. Seems I've fixed the major sound from behind. It was, um, I had a big coil of uh, extension cords sitting on top of one of those um, uh, bottle water cases, so the squeaky plastic bottle waters. And uh, because of the cords sitting on top, it was shaking back and forth with the road. like we get more construction. We used to be over in this area quite a bit. Uh, we've got we've got friends that live over in this area of Henderson and then we used to have uh, Lenan's aunt and uncle lived over here. But uh, aunt and uncle moved back to Ohio? No, not yet. Don't do that yet. And um uh, pandemic, so not exactly going to visit friends. Man, I wish I had thought to put a camera on the instrument cluster so you could see the instrument panel. Oh well, there's always the next drive. I 
I don't know how well the dash cam video is coming through. It looks like it might be a little grainy or pixelated or uh, not quite fluid, which is almost to be expected. It's um, That's going off of my dash cam, and the dash cam itself is recording high quality video, but um, the feed that I'm pulling off of it over Wi-Fi is much lower fidelity. Lots of bumpy bumpies. They have us over on the shoulder. Okay, so evidently the X does not update once a minute. That's unfortunate. So, my darling wife says it looks okay. It is dark, not able to see details. Yeah. Looks like you can see the road ahead, basically, and then the signs and such. Once it gets a little lighter, by the time I hit Kingman, it should be light enough that you could even see me. Although by that time, I probably won't have any data signal. Well, actually, I'll have it back by that point. put some debug code in so that I can try to figure out the speed issue uh, it looks like it's firing just fine now I'm gonna go back up to 73 So like I said, the problem with speed is it's tough to troubleshoot when you're sitting still. Cause it, so you don't know if your units of measurement are correct or your uh, calculations or anything like that. So this debug data that I captured will let me uh, see what is being reported and I know what speed I was going, which is 70 miles an hour, in case somebody needs to remind me of that later. Ooh, 11. Oh, yeah, this is just the little segment that goes around Boulder. Uh, Boulder City. Which I'm sure for the town is bittersweet that now there's an interstate that goes around them instead of through them. I'm sure the locals that don't depend on tourism appreciate it, but those that need a tourism likely are a little worse for wear. That is a uh, truck coming up on the right-hand lane. Oh, you know what? I have still a uh, energy shake. Well, not energy. I don't know. I guess it's energy boost shake? Whatever. Thank you. 
So for those that don't know, uh, I am Michael. I am uh, half of Turtle Herding. Well, not quite half, I guess. We got the, the kids, the pets. Um, and I am on my way from where we are currently with the motor coach in Las Vegas down to Rodeo, New Mexico, which is where my remotely operable observatory lives. And I'm swapping out some parts. Just to, uh, bought some new stuff that I want to get integrated. Uh, should give me better precision on guiding and uh, much better precision on guiding. So I'm really looking forward to that. Doing a couple other miscellaneous things. Uh, swapping out my outside cameras on the shed. Uh, with cameras that actually have person and vehicle detection so I can get notifications that are actually pertinent to someone being there instead of just every little thing that moves and putting down some foam floor tile the the stuff like you would put in your home gym type thing uh, and that's just for anything that gets dropped so it has a little bit more of a cushioned fall I uh, had an incident where my camera and filter wheel and guide camera fell off the back of the scope a couple of weeks back. L little interesting story, but I'll, I'll save that for later when there's more peoples online. It looks like I'm clipping a little bit in the red when I'm talking, so I will turn down the gain a little. Test, test, test. Yep, that should be better. Anyway, um... So, yeah, I've got to do those little bit of things. Looks like there's a lot of cloud cover, but I do start to see some sunlight coming up, up peeking across the mountains. Probably not visible on the camera feed yet. I don't think it's quite sensitive enough for that. I am sending this stream at 720p, not 1080p, because I only have one uh, one cellular connection, and that cellular connection is only on AT&T, so I can't aggregate, I can't switch between carriers whenever one signal goes low, um, and uh, yeah. really eating at me now. I'm trying to figure out how I could get a... F oh, I know how I could do it. I think I might. Anyway, I may change the feeds a little bit, the camera angles. Though I don't... Actually, I do. I don't know if it's going to be... I don't know. We'll see. It may stay just the way it is. I was trying to think of how to... Evidently... Oh, you can see the glow of light off on the horizon. That's cool. Very cool. You can see the cloud cover and the mountaintops glowing against the background and of course you can't see off to my left but Boulder City is all lit up and then further beyond that uh, Las Vegas is kind of bright in the sky you can't really see the city right now uh, we're quite a little bit too far away for that with the mountains and stuff but you can still see the sky glow So that lane change 
was done all automatically by the X. Uh, it saw that there was someone in the lane ahead that was going slower than we are, than I am, and it put on its turn signal, changed lanes, and passed. So for those unaware, I'm uh, on the out, uh, well, let's see, the east side of Boulder City, heading towards the Hoover Dam now. I guess southeast side. And I guess you do know, because you can see it on the map. Such fun! Damn, it's already 5 o'clock in the morning here. I was really hoping to be further along by this point, but it's not really a big deal. I don't have a specific requirement, hard time that I have to be in at Rodeo. Um, the work I need to do, I can get done even if I need to push something to tomorrow morning, I can get done the immediate part tonight with ease, pretty much no matter what time I get in. And then tomorrow morning I could finish up the rest if I need to. And then tomorrow after that I'm heading over to Arizona to help another buddy automate his observatory. And if you're still listening, <clears throat> not a fan of the Atkins energy drinks. They really have, as much as you think that protein taste hits with the regular Atkins, these. Oh, in a diesel can on the side of the road. Man, that's unfortunate that the X isn't updating as frequently. I was thinking it really pushed every minute. I thought it'd be uh, fun to see my range over time, and then when I'm charging, uh, it'll show the supercharging going into it, but uh, evidently it doesn't update that frequently. I'll have to put a timestamp on there so we know when it last updated. I think it might be limited to every 15 minutes. My lovely wife is going to go have a rest. Very well, my love. I uh, love you too, and I'll see you soon. Hope you get some rest. Wow. I almost thought that sign was lit up for a minute, but it's just reflective and in very good color. Night, night. Love you. other code I can tweak to make things a little better. Not too bad though. Oh, I guess I went across the Hoover Dam. I didn't even realize it. With it being so dark, you don't really 
see it. And this, to be clear, the road I'm on now does no longer go across the Hoover Dam itself. Um, it actually goes over the spillway a little further down from the dam. Uh, you can still drive across the dam, but uh, that's more of a touristy exit route than it is uh, for main traffic now. Uh, a lot of that was due to security concerns, I think, um, in the world where people were doing dumb things. Uh, it's better to keep the majority of the traffic off of the dam. It also allows for higher speed travel because it can be optimized more for an interstate experience, whereas the dam itself was definitely not an interstate experience. It was much slower. Whoop. Little blip there on the road. Looks like the clouds are uh, beating back the sunrise a little bit. Just starting that pre-dawn glow on the horizon for me. like we're going through some intermittent signal areas so uh, expect audio and video breakups uh, in the kind of the the no man's land in Arizona heading away from Hoover Dam not a lot of population out here so the only reason their cell towers are for the travelers and they don't necessarily have to be terribly good so Must be my calculation that is wrong. So my reported velocity is 111 kilometers per hour, so that's right.
should be working. Next update, it should have the correct speed. Hey, look at there. Not exactly what's on my speedometer, but not terribly far off either. Good. I'm all alone. There's no one here beside me. My troubles are all gone. There's no one to deride me. Do, 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 do. Lots of intermittent signal right now, so not a lot to see or hear. honestly can't tell if the camera that's pointed at me is actually working. Oh yeah, I guess it is. Okay. some reason it's just not really good at low light which is kind of understandable it's an action cam knockoff but uh, we'll have daylight here in the next hour ish I believe Cruising along here in Arizona, the northern edge of Arizona, heading down toward Kingman, where I will pop on the interstate and slide over to 93, I think it is. I think it's 93 that comes down out of, or goes down toward Phoenix. We will see. Man, I'm not cut out for early mornings anymore. Got up about 3.15 this morning, but I didn't get to bed very early. Well, I got to bed. I just didn't get to sleep very early. Oh, wow. I don't know if you can see all those red blinkies. Yeah, you can kind of see them. Um, those are all wind turbines. At least I'm pretty sure they are. It's tell, but I'm 90% certain. Oh, yep, yeah, and the silhouette of the sunrise. So, yeah, they are definitely wind turbines.
Oh wow, you And they are definitely spinning. I can see their blades and you probably Hmm. My front camera feed just went out. That's unfortunate. I wonder if IP changed. Or I wonder if it's in general my lack of connect. That is really weird. I don't know why the uh, front cam is doing that. I think I'm going to power cycle that camera. Yep, might as well do that now. Okay, yeah, the rear camera is working. We'll let the front camera reboot and uh, see how it goes. We're coming into a little uh, a little blip on the map on the way to Kingman. There's actually a Tesla supercharger uh, right up here. I'm not sure which side of the road it's on. thought I remembered the supercharger being at a pilot flying J. This is definitely not the pilot flying J. Oh, we got the front camera back again. Yay! Such a weird name for a gas station. Terrible, terrible Herbst. I think now they've shortened it to just Terribles and dropped the Herbst. Oh, yeah, there's the pilot. So, oh, yeah, and there's the superchargers. Um, they're right at the nose of that truck, if you can see it off to the right. No, can't really see it. Let's see, I see two, four, six, eight, eight stalls. I'm doing good on charge. I have 108 rated miles left. Which you would not know from my <laughs> Model X speed of information. That's unfortunate. I'll see if I have I can tap into the X's uh, location feed stream a little bit better. It was cool back in the early days, uh, well, early days for us when we owned Tesla. Uh, our first one was uh, 2016. Is that right? 2016? No, 2015. Yeah, 2015 Model S. Um, back in those days, when you were looking at the uh, location tracking in the app, you could actually see the throttle position, like wh whoever was driving when they were hitting the, the throttle on it. You could actually see that deflect in a graph. Um, I don't think they have that exposed anymore, but it was really super cool.
and uh, that black box up at the top right corner if you can see me well if you can see the feed or hear me uh, that is a camera pointed at me but the camera is not uh, performing well in low light so you just see a black box for now Let's see if it's working still yep it is still working that was my watch To be fair to the camera, I do have it set for like sunny exposure when we're driving the motor coach because normally we don't drive at night. So, looks like we have good signal, but not necessarily good bandwidth still. It's getting much brighter out. Well, hello and good morning, Laura. It is uh, good to hear from you. Hope things are doing well in Rota this evening time frame sometime. Probably about five or so your time, I think. Oh, so it looks like we got a little bit of bandwidth back. Um, unfortunately, the I was going to say the camera feed out the front stopped, but now it's uh, returned. <laughs> yeah, so the uh, oh well we'll have data when we have data Evidently, we are in the area called Dolan Springs, Arizona, D-O-L-A-N, are coming into it, ish. And by the way, if you're really more interested in my location on the map, um, if you go to turtleherding.com, that's turtle like the animal, herding like herding animals, not hurting, herding with a D, you sickos. Um, turtleherding.com and click on the post about this drive there's a big map at the bottom of that post that shows exactly where we are and updates in real time uh, just like the one that's on the top left corner here but much bigger and you can zoom in and out and play with it that's really unfortunate on the X's info or lack thereof I'll have to see if I can do something about that That was a weird noise. It 
it sounded like a beep or alarm going off like crazy for just a few seconds, but it was really muted and like it was coming from outside someplace. Maybe it was a texture on the roadway. Got some red blinkies off in the distance. I don't know if they're coming through much on the screen or on the video. Actually, I don't think any of this is coming through on anything right now. cruising down the highway here oh evidently oh it's a I thought it was odd I <laughs> at first I thought they were trying to say there was a stop sign coming up ahead for me Man, I'm really shocked that this camera isn't showing me at all right now. I know I had it adjusted, but I didn't realize it was that adjusted. You know that point on your trip, well, any point on your trip where you start questioning if you have everything you need or if you've forgotten something critical? Doing that in the old noodle right now. I am quite conf I'm pretty confident in everything that I got and that I got everything that I need. I've been making a list for about the last two weeks and I got everything together that was on the list but you know there's still that little chance I'm gonna have to see if I can turn off that notice about geocode errors Whew. do that when I get up here at the supercharger about uh, 25 minutes away from the supercharger where I'll be stopping for the first little bit of top up. fairly pretty uh, clouds out here you can see s some color in the camera on the horizon out there which is odd because it actually is showing more oranges than I'm seeing so uh, I'm guessing it's just the way the camera is set up one point oh nine gig of data used so far my uh, month just started fresh on this sim so uh, one point oh nine gig is all 
on this drive. Oh, hey, you can start seeing now almost just a little bit. And omission on this hotspot compared to other things because the X right now has LTE, but the hotspot is still HSDPA+. Plus. Oh, getting some bandwidth back. Looky there. Got some signal just for a minute. thought about it I could have had multiple carriers could have had uh, my little USB cellular adapters plugged into a hub didn't even think of that oh well Gus, Gus is really good jerky, five miles ahead. Some really nice reds over on the left. I think it's out of frame. For you just uh, sunrise shining up get another 12 miles to the supercharger which is just fine I have 136 miles of rated range left side got really rough and this side's not as bad.
to the supercharger. You'd think I'd have some better internet by now. Averaging 425 watt hours per mile, which is pretty typical for the X. At least for my X, the Model X. Um, I think I am going to get set up with at least two different connections, two cellular links, because my phone is T-Mobile, so I can at least have T-Mobile and AT&T going. I can plug my that way. Let's see how much data we push now. 1.13 gig. It's another 40 megabytes. No, 400 megabytes. No, 40 megabytes. Not a lot. AT&T is uh, sucking out here. Amazon Prime Trucks. <sighs> Not quite the same, but uh, reminded me of the Amazon Logistics drivers peeing in bottles on their. Coming up 
Going down to 55. And then it'll drop 45 and 35, and I think it even gets 25 as we come into town. Coming into Kingman, Arizona now. Superchargers just a mile ahead on the left, just past the interstate. And I will be working on my bandwidth while I'm stopped. Because, uh... Man, it is really not busy compared to what I normally see this place. Pulling into the supercharger, which is empty, which is good for me because means I don't have speed. Oh, they got new supercharger. Er, now I don't know which to use. I think these are still the best ones. Kind of. Seems we're almost back. I'm now supercharging. At a rate of... Uh, 307 miles of range per hour of charge. Let's see if we can't get multiple data streams going here. All right, now I'm going to get my app installed on the laptop so that I can pair these two data streams together. That's why. Uh, I was going to say, man, the Speedify installer is really small for a Windows app. That's because it downloads more crap as it's installing.
and my phone suggested it's time to stretch my legs a bit, and I would tend to agree. Going through Atlanta, let's see if we can make that a little closer to where we is. Yeah, there we go. Hi, everybody. Good morning. I think I'm back online now. Minimize that. Don't need to calculate Minimize that. Don't need that. <laughs> Getting all my windows cleaned up here on the laptop. So, we had a chat from Laura saying, uh, let me get this moved over here so I can see everything that I need. Hello, Laura. Thank you. Uh, Tim and Rusty heading to California this morning. Oh, man. I do not envy that drive. Of course, I'm on a similar drive. And Pete says I'm online. Hello. Good morning, Pete. Glad to see you this morning. And uh, says everything is five by five. Thank you for that confirmation. And we have Augusto. Good morning, Augusto. How are you this morning, buddy? Uh, glad to see you joining along. I am at the supercharger here in Kingman, Arizona, and I'm going to, I've got the mic separate here because I just hopped out and I didn't bring my wireless mic pack for this, uh, for this journey. So... Um, I'm gonna, um, uh, crap. I do that, do that. Yeah, I'm gonna unplug the mic for just a second. Um, let me mute it so that it doesn't blow your guys' eardrums out. Testing, testing. All right. Uh, let me make sure it's selected the right pack. Yep. Okay, good. Uh, so, yeah, I'm just supercharging here at Carl's Jr. in Kingman, Arizona. Tesla has their superchargers here. Uh, it is chugging away. And while that's working, I'm going to see if I can't get more better data from the Tesla so that you can see more details about what's going on with it because what's up there right now is it's been that way the whole day so I don't know why it's not giving you more data or quicker data it says I only need to charge for another 15 minutes here before I head on Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's routing me through a different supercharger.
Yeah, this last ran at 4.24 a.m. So that data is really old. wonder why it's so far out of date. Well, that's interesting. This is updated. Okay. Location tracker. All right, so it is providing data. Is the server getting it? It is not updating. Huh. That is really weird. The X data update was working fine last night when I was testing it. Oh, I bet I know where an issue could be. That's not going to let me in. See if I get any chats going here. You can kind of see the sunrise ish back in there. All right, now this should let me in. Very good.
See if that works now. No. Damn it. Sorry, I'm just trying to get more data for the Model X for you guys. And I'm not sure why it's not working. Nothing got published. Okay. Anything in the logs? Oh, well, no, that was yesterday when I was playing with it. Messing with the code, to be clear. There's got to be something... That is preventing this from running. All that looks right.
I know this is thrilling, everybody watching. Uh, supercharging at 155 miles of range per hour of charge. I'm up to 270, 207 miles of range. Really freaking annoying. Okay, well, I will give up on that side. Wow, there's five people watching.
What? <laughs> My Google search is in Chinese. That is crazy. Why in the hell? Sometimes using a VPN to do fun things results in odd things. Yeah, it says I'm in LA, but for some reason, Google is forcing me to use the Hong Kong search. Oh, well. Alright, so I'm pretty sure I'm long past the time that I needed to be here, but let me check. Oh no, five minutes remaining, okay. All right, I am going to
run into the restroom, I believe. Did that stick? No. Sorry, I know this is uh, super thrilling, guys and gals, whomever is out there. My bandwidth is, I mean, it seems to be working. Hmm. Where can I not? Ah. Just looking at all the settings in uh, Speedify to see if I can get things to work a little better. So weird. may need to switch servers again with Speedify so that I can get more data. a little better now.
Let me check on chat here. Nothing new. It's okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm here uh, supercharging, sitting here plugged in. I have sufficient range to continue to the next stop, but I think I'm going to run in and use the restroom here real quick. Stop messing around on the computer, and uh, then we'll get back on the road. So, with that, I'm going to mute my mic and... Oh, let me put, oh, I think of these things. Text. I swear I'm going to go use the restroom here in just a moment. Okay. Be right back. I'm gonna uh, mute the audio and I'll put up a little notice and uh, I'll be back.
and we're back. That bathroom was nasty. I dare say I left it in better shape than it was when I got there. Not a high bar, mind you, but alas, it is true. All right. Hello, hello. <laughs> All right, so we'll get some chats up on screen here. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see here. Let me turn on the notification sounds for navigation because that's better. That's there. So, hello, Phil. Um, no Lynn Ann this morning. Uh, not not for uh, this trip. It's just going to be me uh, heading down to my observatory. There we go. Uh, Lenan is staying in Las Vegas with the coach and the fur babies. Now turn right onto West Bale Street. And I'm turning right onto West Bale Street, evidently. Let's see here. Phil says he should stop watching. Getting too expensive. Yes, I'm really good at spending other people's money. Now turn right to take the Interstate 40 East Road. First, Ubiquity Network gear, which I hope you still appreciate and enjoy, uh, even with recent uh, kerfuffles in the news and uh, then enterprise server to set up a home wow yeah nice <laughs> and uh, net what's next oh and set up home assistant yes home assistant is crazy good um, and then I might be able to talk into a telescope that that's uh, that'll be interesting we'll have to see how you what you think oh That wasn't really necessary, was it, buddy? Okay, so, anyway. And he's dripping something. Actually, it's probably his freshwater tank. Um, the tanks on RVs, just as an FYI, um, they have overflow vents so if you let's say you're getting ready to go on a road trip and you fill up the fresh water tank all the way to the top and then you take off down the highway when the water's sloshing around or when you're going up a grade and it causes the tank to be unlevel it uh, will cause that overflow or water to come out the overflow so that's typically what you're going to get when you're behind an RV and you see something dripping that or if they're a class A they might be running their air conditioners on the roof and then the condensate from that might be dripping so all right let's see here how are things looking on the stream looking good looking good five by five all around can everybody hear me okay now back on the road here we're gonna be driving 20 miles on I-40 east out of Kingman and then we're gonna take the exit 71 onto US 93 south toward Phoenix hopefully the internet's a little more stable this time 
uh, I do have not only my AT&T router but also now I plugged in my cell phone over USB it's on T-Mobile so it'll give us another uh, feed of data if available So Phil, where uh, where is it you're located again? I remember chatting with you before, but it is it's been too long. And just as an FYI, the X I, I'm in a Tesla Model X. I do have full autopilot, um, and uh, it is doing most of the driving but I'm responsible for its actions uh, Phil says he's loving the unify installed unraid and liking that too very cool and Phil is near Toronto nice yeah we've been to Toronto uh, actually that's where I physically saw the fir my first Tesla vehicle in person uh, there was a a Tesla showroom in a mall there in Toronto and we also saw the uh, Hockey Hall of Fame while we were there that big bright ball on the top left corner that is uh, the Sun it is our closest star and the one that provides the largest majority of our warmth and sunlight or and light of course it provides our sunlight but our light a little mishap in the restroom not not what you're thinking um, my uh, sunglasses fell and hit the ground which is really unfortunate these are my favorite sunglasses and uh, they were scratch free but not any longer unfortunately I'm just gonna pass this van Of course, he sped up as soon as I started to come around him. So uh, for those that may not be aware, David Bott and I have done a couple of live streams the last few weekends, last few Saturdays in a row. Uh, the first one we did three weeks ago, four weeks ago now? I don't know. The third, pre third previous one, first one we did recently, was on uh, lithium-ion batteries. Uh, the next one we did was on solar. And the most recent one we did a week ago was on cellular uh, antennas, boosters, just general connectivity stuff, and then uh, a little bit of Starlink right at the very end. And for those sessions, um, I we've played around with a lot of software, and I'm really I don't mind paying for good software when it is the only thing that does the job and it does it well. Uh, but if there's open source free software that does the job as well, then I don't really feel like paying for something else. I really prefer the open source model anyway. I'm a, I'm a big Linux geek. And uh, so I've been using OBS Studio for these streams but we would played with one set of software called vMix that I was really heavily tempted by 
because it had um, it had a social plugin where you could overlay your specific chat messages in the feed and I really wanted that so uh, I ended up writing it for OBS so I can do fun stuff like this and Phil says not sure about home assistant so far it's not accurate about the state of his TP-Link devices that's interesting um, yeah some of the integrations are limited by what the what the device feeds out um, but I'm guessing you're talking about well so TP-Link makes a lot of stuff right they make routers they make um, access points they make actually a line of network gear that is trying to compete with uh, Ubiquiti's Unify line where it has a single pane of glass management interface and stuff um, but they also make switches and um, smart light type stuff smart lighting smart home stuff and if I remember right uh, there's actually a bit of a kerfuffle right now in home assistant world because TP-Link is going to be doing away with um, local support yeah smart switches for Phil um, so they're going to be doing away with the ability to control your smart switches locally which is a big deal for home assistant home assistant really prefers local control over your devices uh, because it it reduces the uh, the timing lag from when you click a button or do something to when the action is actually taken and it's also more reliable you don't have to depend on your internet for something that's a cloud synced service uh, or like you do for something that's a cloud synced service but um, I was listening to the home assistant podcast this past week I think it was they were talking about how TP-Link is looking yet again to disable local access so I'm not terribly surprised Phil unfortunately um, I would recommend um, number one see if there's alternative firmware see if you can flash ESP home or Tasmoda to the device and that'll give you local MQTT access uh, the other option would be not necessarily a great option because you've invested in the TP-Link devices, but uh, Sonoff and Shelly, with Shelly actually being the stronger preference in my opinion because they have MQTT built in, so you don't even have to flash those to get local control. And when you are using MQTT, it disables their cloud side service, so there's no external connection whatsoever into those devices but you're still able to use their firmware upgrades and get the benefits of, of their feature improvements over time. So I, I do like the Shelly stuff quite a bit. And good morning, John. Yes, <laughs> I really was doing 82 and yes, I am in the, the Tesla. So, um, yeah, not, that, that's not normally a speed I would do in the coach but yep today just me and the Tesla um, rolling down the highway heading towards rodeo to do some astronomy installs uh, got some new parts for the Astro rig and getting getting that set up so the cool thing I was talking about vmix and this uh, chat overlay system uh, with vMix, I'd have to have that running on my computer here in the car, and then I'd have to have, for the social plugin, I could connect to it from a web browser, but the web browser, this is going to sound crazy, the web browser in my car <laughs> doesn't like to connect to local network stuff. Uh, you have to do some finagling with it to get that to happen. So with my setup, it's all on my server in the cloud. And so I have the interface here on screen and I can see the chat messages as they come in and, and do fun things like slide in uh, John Bloxham's chat message here. So we got six miles left before our exit off of the interstate and on to US 93 South heading toward Phoenix 
it's unfortunate because uh, so the Tesla autopilot system it's uh, it is still driver assistance right it's not like I could take a nap and it's gonna get me there uh, they are working on that and, and they've made a lot of progress towards it in the beta software that some of the, the special insiders have um, but as of right now the driver is still responsible for all the actions of the vehicle so you still have to be paying attention and it checks in with you if it doesn't sense torque on the steering wheel like you're you're holding the steering wheel it checks in with you to, to make sure that you're paying attention and if you ignore it too much it'll actually just lock out the uh, autopilot system entirely and if you like if you really are ignoring it like you've fallen asleep or you're having a heart attack uh, it'll actually turn your hazard lights on and stop in the middle of the road uh, which will definitely get your get somebody's attention uh, depending on what road you're on but uh, oh so on interstates what's or what are called limited access or a road that has or a road that has a center divider that it knows of uh, then it it will go up to I think it's 90 miles an hour you can set it for and it'll keep driving um, the reason it limits it to 90 aside from logical sanity but uh, is that it its cameras and radar and ultrasonic and all that stuff there's only so much range that stuff has so if you're going above 90 it doesn't have enough confidence in its ability to predict what's going on ahead and react to it so it won't let you set it above 90 but on secondary roads non-limited access no center divider then it limits you to five miles an hour over what it thinks the speed limit is sometimes it knows right and sometimes it doesn't so on secondary roads uh, the autopilot is kind of hit and miss um, I like it a lot but I usually go about eight miles an hour over the speed limit uh, you know don't don't tell uh, Red Jag uh, he, he's a Philadelphia police officer uh, actually I think he's higher up than that he's not like a beat cop or anything but um, anyway so five miles an hour over on a lot of roads like this US 93 going down towards Phoenix uh, you'll get run over I mean people just run right up on you quick because they're all doing eight plus miles an hour over the speed limit and so it makes autopilot functional but not really practical since you can't really keep up with the flow of traffic but I do like it a lot like no hands it's it's driving in one mile <laughs> so John asked uh, I'm going to rodeo how am I making that distance in the car without charging I am charging I actually have um, three charge stops required and then I'm adding an extra one just because um, I want to top up before I get to Rusty's uh, I don't want to have to depend on charging up at Rusty's. I mean, I, I'm I can, but it's going to be a slow charge, and so I'd rather have as much energy coming into Rusty's as I can. So I'll do one one last charge in Wilcox, Arizona, before I pull in there. And just as an FYI, the trip, as it was routed, is supposed to be about nine miles. Or nine hours, nine miles, man. Uh, so rated to be about nine hours, and um, then in order to make it there, I would need to charge for about an hour and a half. But like I said, uh, in in during the drive, like I said, though I'm going to charge a little more than that, just so um, I have more juice once I get into Rusty's Phil yes Elon said internet will be available in RVs by the end of the year for SpaceX 
yes, that is awesome, and I'm excited by it. Um, I do have a Starlink dish already, but it's not a mobile. It, it's a transportable dish, but it's not active while mobile. Um, there we go. So now it knows it's a divided highway, and I can do my eight over. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited about that. And John says, uh, it's a long day, must be staying in a hotel, a motel overnight. So Rusty's RV Ranch, which is where my astronomy shed is, she actually has two rental cabins. And so I'm going to be staying in one of those tonight. And then tomorrow I'm leaving there and going to the other side of the mountains. It's only like 30 miles away as the crow flies, but I have to drive almost two hours to get there because i got to go around the mountains. Uh, and even if I went over the mountains, it's still about two hours. But there's no charge stops on, or over top of the mountain. So, um, yes. Uh, once I leave Rusty's, I'm going to be heading over to um, a buddy of mine in Arizona that has an observatory. And I'm going to help him automate the observatory so he can run it remotely. And uh, now, and just so everyone's aware... Uh, my wife and I have been quarantined for basically a year. You know, we're not really doing things that aren't necessary, um, generally speaking. Like, that's the first public restroom I've used in a year <laughs> there at Hardy's, or Carl's Jr. Uh, but I was still wearing a mask. Uh, of course, I did wash my hands and all that fun stuff. Um, but my wife and I are both now also fully vaccinated. Uh, we got our second dose this past Monday. So it's not quite full efficacy at this moment, but it's uh, it's certainly better than nothing. And then the buddy that I'm going to see, uh, he has also basically been quarantined for over a year and not doing things out and about. And he too is fully vaccinated and he's about a month out from his second dose. So he is uh, full efficacy. Uh, so we've all been distanced, we've all been quarantined, we're all vaccinated and uh, should be about as safe as you can get for that type of activity nowadays. Looks like my data is holding up okay. Everybody still able to hear and see me all right out there? So, John asks, how long does it take to charge? Uh, if I were following Tesla's recommendations for this trip, it would be roughly 15 to 30 minutes per stop um, with three stops, plus or minus. It's about an hour and a half of total charge time. Uh, so that's, that's what it adds to the trip. Keep in mind, too, the charge stops are like every three to three and a half hours, generally speaking. So by that point, you usually are ready to get out of the car and, you know, go use a restroom, grab a snack, something. Uh, so it's really not a tremendous inconvenience. Um, and then, too, <laughs> you can actually watch YouTube videos. Uh, I can watch my Plex server on the, the center console here. Uh, play video games. There's actually like a Mario Kart style video game that you play with the steering wheel of the vehicle. So you can entertain yourself while you're charging as well if you really want to. Uh, but yeah, generally speaking for this trip in this vehicle, 15 to 30 minutes per charge uh, over three charges. And that would get me to Rusty's. Uh, like I said, though, I'm going to add one more charge stop at the very end at Wilcox. Um, and then it's about another 80 miles to Rusty's from there. So I just want to be as topped up as possible before I head on down to Rusty's. 
just for personal convenience, but it's certainly not required. And John asks, how far can I go on a charge? Uh, with this Tesla Model X, uh, it's an older version, so it's a less power efficient drivetrain. And uh, it's, a, it's a thirstier version of the vehicle because it's the performance version. Uh, so this one is rated about 280 miles to a charge. The newer Tesla's uh, Model X, they'll go about 320 miles on a charge uh, for the performance and maybe a little longer for the long range version. And then the real long range king in the Tesla world is the Model S, which is their full size sedan. And if I remember right, you can get one of those now on order that'll go over 500 miles on a charge. So you, you can definitely make some trips easily with that. Uh, we like the X, well, we like aspects of the X. We like its size. Um, we can technically seat six people. And then when, I'm, when we don't have those people in, I can lower the rear seats and have cargo space. If we were to design a new Model X right now, we would get the five seat because the third and second row both fold flat then. And you can uh, get a lot more capacity there. Um, but yeah. Uh, lots, lots of range in the X. Phil says uh, he and his wife got their first vaccine ten days ago. No dropouts. Sounds like single side band in the background. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So there's a. Uh, it's a texture on the roadway, and the mic I'm using is just plugged directly into a sound card. So there's no, no post processing of the sound before it gets to you guys. So sorry about that. Um, the roads here are, are not. Uh, good morning, David. Nice to see you. Uh, Ick day in Burleson. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be rainy and cloudy. Preparing for tomorrow's leave. 46, 25 mile an hour winds. Woo! Yeah, the drive's going well. Thanks, David. And uh, yeah, David actually has a long range Model X. Um, and his will go 355 miles when they max out the charge on it. So just as a, an FYI, oh, and it looks like my bandwidth is not doing amazing right now. Um, the Tesla has done two revisions to the Model X since this one. This is a 2017. Uh, David's revision is the first one that they did, and they replaced the front drive motors with one of their DC permanent reluctance. Permanent C. DC permanent reluctance, permanent magnet reluctance motor. There we go. I get it. Um, so that's what helps his efficiency. And then they've done another revision since then that actually gives a little bit different uh, body style and a horizontal screen instead of the vertical screen that I, I and David have. Um, and I don't know if they're, they got any more range or if it's just an aesthetic uh, change and then the different uh, screen. But if you go to tesla.com, you can pick any of the vehicles and go through their configurator and see what the rated range is. Also keep in mind, you won't really get the rated range all the time. Uh, like on this trip, I'm averaging uh, right now 375 watt, 30 miles. And if you divide that into 100 kilowatt hours, uh, you'll notice that it does not come out to 270 miles. So it, it's not quite, um, the, the rated range is kind of an ideal. Every, everything's flat, no wind, uh, 75 degrees outside. And uh, Phil says, uh, sorry to jinx my bandwidth. Well, it was bound to happen. Um, we're going out in the middle of nowhere, no man's land in uh, Arizona. So uh, it's not terribly surprising oh but it looks like yay my my model x data is updating very cool glad to see that oh 
I do appreciate everyone uh, who's out there chatting with me. It helps the, the drive go by much quicker. Uh, this is kind of a boring, semi-boring drive. So uh, having, having people out there able to chime in and uh, chat with me really makes things go by a lot quicker. And the road's a lot smoother now, so it should sound less like sideband. <laughs> yep, David uh, says, just like a gas car, everything takes power, so the faster you drive, hills, wind, etc., um, air conditioning, the more things you're running, the less miles. And that's absolutely right. The biggest difference between EV and gas is, um, you know, with an EV, it does take longer to replenish your ability to go the next tank full, basically. Um, but honestly, it's not such a big difference. Uh, the Model 3 and Model Y, for example, the charge stops, instead of being uh, 15 to 30 minutes, would be more like 10 to 20 minutes before you're on the road again. And yes, self-driving definitely helps <laughs> with my ability to, to uh, manage a stream while I'm doing this. Um, David, I was just telling him that I actually have the interface to be able to pop up the chats uh, on the web browser on the Tesla. So I'm actually, you know, it's not as far off, not as far afield from, uh, you know, paying attention to the road to get the chats on screen. John, uh, when we're leaving Vegas. So we're leaving um, at least by the end of May. Uh, we're due in Kentucky on June 4th, so that'll take us uh, four or five days. I can't remember now what we have it set for, but uh, four or five days to get to Kentucky from Vegas. And then, um, but I don't know. Um, I'm doing this trip as an effort to not have to bring the coach down here uh, because it's it's kind of down out of the way compared to just driving straight from Las Vegas to Kentucky. So I didn't want to have to drag the coach down the rodeo. Uh, but depending on the state of things, I may need to paint the Astro shed. And if that's the case, I may have to bring the coach down. And uh, if that happens, then we'll probably leave at least a week ahead of our planned time. So here, because we're on this two lane non-divided highway section, autopilot is now limiting me to five over the speed limit. Uh, thankfully, it knows the speed limit, it got it correct. Um, but uh, I'd much rather get that extra three miles an hour. And now we're going into a divided highway again. So it should, yes, there we go. So yep, David and Brenda are heading out tomorrow, heading back towards Southwoods. And uh, I even have a rear view as well, so you can see the car behind me. And then back to my front view.
seems I should have uh, taken time while I was stopped to top up my water. But let's see if I can do this. Aha! Cold water. I have a cooler behind the seat here. <laughs> yeah, my buddies in uh, the Boston area were really complaining about the snow yesterday. One guy in the middle of the workday, you know, not not the end of the workday, not at night, middle of the workday, he's like, well, oh, I'm getting tired of this. I've already had to shovel my driveway twice this morning. And David is correct. I'm using um, Blackview dash cam. Uh, I have the, uh, I think it's the DR, is there letters at the beginning? Um, 750, uh, which is uh, 1080p 60, and then the what it considers the rear camera is 1080p 30. Um, I actually have two sets of them, so I have four cameras total. So I could technically give you a view out the sides of the car as well, because I'm using the rear cameras from each pair on the sides, and then the front cameras of each pair out the front and rear. No RO dispenser installed yet. No, not on the X. <laughs> I don't uh, don't really have that much of a need for it on the X, uh, but you know, definitely on the coach. Looks like bandwidth is a little in and out. No, that's not going to work. And back to bandwidth. Good. So it is helping. Uh, I don't know. David, if you're still watching, or uh, there we go. <laughs> yeah, so David sent the link to the cam. Um, so David, I only have my AT&T hotspot with me, but I remembered my phones are on T-Mobile, so I plugged my cell phone in over USB, and I've got Speedify running on the laptop now. So now I'm uh, in streaming mode sharing between the AT&T and the T-Mobile. Uh, I think I have like 50 gig on T-Mobile that I can use in hotspot mode. And then my AT&T is unlimited, of course. And this drive, I've used 3.13 gig of data on it. Let's see, I think your met David is your message coming through on Amazon on the Amazon link. Oh yeah, yeah it is. Okay, you just sent it twice. That's why. Oh, whoops! I deleted a message. The road's in better shape than I remember, but it's uh, early. So let me see what my energy graph says that I have my rated range. 
Wow. I must be doing a lot of downhill. Oh, yes, I'm definitely doing a lot of downhill. So my average right now is 218 watt hours per mile for the last 30 miles, which is very atypical. <laughs> um, usually, no, we're not going to limit. Oh, this is a new section of road. It doesn't know about this. Nope. <laughs> so the the act the road you does the old road sorry I can't use autopilot because it limits my speed uh, the old road goes way over that direction this is all new uh, so that's why it's so nice it's funny I'm watching it on the map though and the Tesla's like you should be over here. So yeah, uh, with that such a low watt hours per mile usage, uh, it's rated, it's estimating right now I could go 311 miles, but this, this is not the way it normally runs. Um, so usually I'm about 400, 420 watt hours per mile. Oh, looks like the old road's coming back to meet the new road here. Nope, it just crossed over that direction. So that's that path there to the right that we just saw. That's the path the old road took. That is funny. It's interesting. It actually shows the new road on the maps, but it won't it's not routing over it. And I think that's because Tesla actually uses a hybrid uh GPS routing design the the map that you see is from Google Maps unless you have no connectivity and then there's still a uh, I think it's a Garmin based map that you get on the left hand side of the display here uh, even when the center display doesn't show anything but it also then uses the Garmin uh, to do the actual route calculations. And so Brian is asking, why do I need dash cams? Can't I tap into the eight cams that are in the car? Now I can, yes. But in 2017, when this came out, you could not. Um, they didn't have the Tesla cam set up where you could plug in a thumb drive and all that. Um, and then in order to get it, I had to upgrade the center consoles because they did a revision of the center consoles uh, computer and the original one was using an NVIDIA Tegra based chip. The new one uses an Intel based chip. It's much faster and has much more capability to actually upgrade and then I could use the thumb drive. The other downside is the um, Will it let me enable? Yeah, 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 it sees it again. Okay, this is old road again. Um, the other downside is I can't get a live feed off of it. I'd have to wait for it to be recorded to the USB um, and then take it out and plug it in to something and then record, read it out. Um, or actually, I have a Raspberry Pi plugged in that emulates a thumb drive so that I can get data off of it without having to remove it. Uh, so it synchronizes all the recorded video up to my server every time I, I park next to the coach because it, it'll jump onto Wi-Fi and upload all the data. But um, the black views give me better visibility uh, in a lot of ways and they record audio. So it it's a little bit different and I can actually stream them and view events remotely. So I can pull up the app on my phone and tap into it and actually see a live view of what's going on right now, which Tesla doesn't support right now. And David says the big side, big downside on the Tesla mapping, you can't set your own route. Um, yeah, it not easily for sure. 
uh, at a minimum, you have to just set your destination as some point on the route, and then when you hit that point, set your next destination. So it's it's certainly not easy to do. And the color of the Tesla cams, yes. So they are missing, uh, I think it's the green channel. Um, so they have a red and blue and uh, clear, basically. Uh, so this gets in a little deep into the weeds, but um, color cameras, there, there's really no such thing as a color camera. Uh, the sensor itself is always just a luminance sensor, so it just senses how bright the light that hit that, that little pixel is. Um, so to get a color camera, they actually put a layer of a filter over it that has uh, red, green, blue, depending on the camera, it could be red, green, blue across the whole thing. Some cameras will have red, green, blue luminance, and some of them will have uh, red, green, green, blue, or red, green, blue, green. So they'll have two greens per red and blue pair. Um, so there's a lot of variation, but that that's all on the sensor chip itself. There's a filter laying over top of it. Oh boy, there's something big going on here. Uh, so autopilot, uh, at least for the side markers, doesn't need all three colors, doesn't need red, green, blue. Uh, and actually it's more efficient to only have, I think it's red and blue is what it uses. Um, so it actually gets more sensitivity, more data, more actionable data by using just the red and blue instead of red, green, and blue. Uh, okay, so it looks like what happened there, in case you're wondering, is that a low boy tractor trailer with a grater, or not a grater, um, it's a dirt mover, I can't think of what the technical name is. Shovel, I think. Anyway, um, tried to come out of the parking lot and he hit a high ridge and so it, it got him stopped up right on top. Yes, Tesla colors do not look like what you would expect on most of the cameras. And I think actually the newer ones may have changed that because they're catering more towards the dash cam use case. So the newer ones may have full color, but I can't remember. Gonna go to the left lane because as David knows everything's smoother in the left lane. There we go. Yes, at least on David and my vehicles, only the rear color or rear camera is full color. Yeah, David, um, I think the if there are color ones out there, um, I think they're in, the, it was a change in mid to late 2020. And I, I know your X was made like November of 2019, actually. And yes, life is smoother in the left lane. 
I'm not sure you actually have that trademarked, but yes. So Phil is asking, do I follow the SpaceX uh, spaceship testing? Yes, Starship, I believe is what you're talking about uh, down in Boca Chica. And absolutely, yeah. Um, the last one exploding right before it landed was uh, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, I don't know if you watch Everyday Astronaut on YouTube. Uh, he had really great coverage of it. There were a lot of good video angles. David says he loves the new board that auto turns on his aqua hot burner as needed. Yes, it is awesome. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, for those that aren't aware, I, I do a lot of tinkering. I might be a little bit of a geek. Um, and so I made my first ever PC board, like fat, designed it, uh, had it fabricated, had all the components soldered on and, and soldered up a few extra ones uh, that the fab wouldn't put on for me because they were through hole. Um, and so the, the design, and actually that's part of the reason why I'm going down to Rusty's. Uh, the design is it you plug on an Arduino Nano and then um, you have two relay outputs, two sensor inputs, and then a uh, CAN bus connection so that you can plug it into whatever CAN bus system you're using. Uh, and that's actually what runs Tiffin Motor Coaches, all the, what they call the spider control system. Uh, any Those blue panels, blue and white LED panels that you press to turn lights on and off and different things. Those are spider controls brand using a, a protocol known as RVC, where the C stands for CAN bus. Long, long winded. Um, I use them, I made the board specifically designed to handle uh, observatory roof control. So I'm going to be replacing my ad hoc roof control creation at the astronomy shed with two of my own boards. Uh, but it also works well in the RV. So for David's RV, we programmed it to do, to control his RO production and to turn on his diesel aqua hot burner whenever his thermostats call for heat. And yeah, not not just for the shower. So he did have, and still does have a flow sensor on the hot water line to his shower, so it will kick it on. He already had that set up. Uh, when he turns on the shower, it'll kick on the diesel burner. But now with this new board, it controls uh, based on the thermostats. When the thermostats say heat that are actually in actively heating, it turns on the diesel burner so that it uh, keeps the, uh, and I'm moving over for this guy, so that it keeps, um, yeah, keeps the water hot. And yes, just a little geek is an understatement. So, uh, everybody out there, what, what do you think of the chat system, uh, being able to pull up chat messages on the feed like I'm doing? Uh, curious if it's working well or uh, does the slidey motion make anybody seasick? Uh, I'm, I would imagine if that were the case, you'd be already motion sick from the drive itself. So. <laughs> yeah, and most importantly, the board does turn off the diesel aqua hot after the heating demand has stopped. So that's that's the important part. Um, and and the, the key to that, the reason why it's something that we wanted and, and I've had for a while now and David now is enjoying is the diesel aqua hot as so so the aqua hot system surprise supplies hot water to the coach and. Uh, air heating, so heating up the actual interior of the coach. It can also pre-warm the engine 
before a lock, uh, a cold snap. Um, so the problem though is, well, okay. And it has three sources of heat that it can use. So it can use electric burner, just like uh, electric hot water or electric water heater residential. It can use diesel fired burner and it can use heat from the engine. If the engine is running, there's a coolant loop from the engine that actually runs through the aqua hot. When you're stationary, especially for longer periods of time, using diesel is required in cold weather to produce enough heat to actually use it for heating the coach. And most of the time, especially if it's cooler, um, you need that amount of heat to have continuous hot water for a shower. So the, a little rough over here, I'm going to go back over. Um, the problem is if you're stationary for a long period of time and you leave the diesel side on so that you get heating for the hot water and, and heating for the coach, you could run through your diesel fuel before you're ready to move again. Uh, so with this system, it lets the aqua hot only be on for the periods where it's absolutely required and then shuts off the diesel side and lets the electric handle things when it, it's the high demand is not present. So, Phil says uh, the chat is very cool, no problems, good to hear. And uh, yeah, the chat system was first shown in uh, our David and my last tech talk uh, where we talked about cellular data and antennas and boosters and a little bit of Starlink. Oh, and Wi-Fi uh, boosters and antennas and then a little bit of Starlink. Looks like we're going through a little bit of a signal dip here. And we're back. Kind of. Not really. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it looks like AT&T is completely gone right now. So the stream is going out 100% over my phone. Yay. Yes, definitely not a great area for cell. My ability to uh, see and respond to chat messages is going to be greatly because no AT&T means no signal for the car and which means the web browser doesn't work to load the chats as they come in so uh, chat amongst yourselves as we go through this AT&T wasteland
unfortunately, I think that would kill my T-Mobile data connection. So it looks like um, data is back-ish for my uh, stream. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So just cruising down the road here, heading uh, ultimate destination of Rodeo, New Mexico. I am uh, a ways away from Phoenix at this point, heading down toward Phoenix on US 93. Let's see here what my next charge stop is. So I will be arriving. Oh, man, that's having me go a different way, way than I was planning. Dang, that's having me go right through downtown Phoenix on a Saturday. Mm, I may override that. By the way, right now we're just outside of Baghdad. Uh, it is off to the northeast of us here. I think I'm going to override that. So I know there's a supercharger in Wickenburg, which is uh, before you get to Phoenix. I think I'm going to stop there instead and then go around the outskirts of Phoenix and then charge at um, not Eloy. I don't know. Uh, there's another, it starts with a C. I can't remember the name of it there. Um, there's a town that starts with a C, not Chandler. Oh, looks like I got some data back. Uh, dang it. Can't think of the name of that one. Anyway. This is called the Joshua Forest Scenic Road. <laughs> well, technically the stream does run off a computer. It's not a desktop computer or a laptop. It runs off a tablet. Uh, oh, the front view camera is stuck. That's unfortunate. Um, let me switch, see if it'll reset. Yay, there we go. Thanks for uh, Casa Grande. Thank you, sweetie. Lenann, my lovely assistant and wife, uh, or lovely wife, and then sometimes she'll be my assistant. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh, hello, Red Jag. Uh, yes, hitting the road with the Tesla today. Uh, Going to be four days round tripping it. That's strange. It's not uh, letting me use the chat. little dusty here that uh, tractor trailer just pulled off Yeah, the data through here for AT&T is still spotty, so that's why it's not doing so well. <laughs> yeah, uh, so Lenan says uh, we should play the charge time game and guess how long it's going to take to charge. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's quite as thrilling and certainly not as good as quick of a payoff. Fuel game, you know, if you won pretty quickly. The problem with these little strips is, uh, oh yeah, I really should have just booked it. Oh well. You don't know how long these passing zone areas are going to be. So I could have gone well and passed both big trucks. I opted to not do that, which is okay. Hey, Red Jag. Thanks. Glad to hear I'm back. <clears throat> Hello, Augusto. I don't know if I'm fully back yet, and uh, I'm still uh, enjoying the not-so-good vibrations of the roads here. I can turn that down a bit for you. So maybe it's not so loud in the uh, mic. And then I'll just speak up a little bit. So Red Jag, hour and 15 minutes of charge time. That might work for the entire trip combined, but definitely not a single charge stop. Uh, at least not required to make the trip. Now, I may charge up 45 minutes to maybe almost an hour at Wilcox before I head on down to Rusty's just to have that, that extra battery reserve uh, when I get to Rusty's. Yeah, it looks like I've got decent signal now.
Red Jag, I'll let you know if you if you need to look away to uh, have plausible deniability. Yeah, Red Jag. So I'm going to be doing it. So when I plotted this out, knowing the X's thirst for uh, electrons, uh, I only needed three charge stops, and each charge stop was 15 to 30 minutes in order to make it to Rusty's from Las Vegas. Uh, I'm going, I'm adding an additional charge stop at the end. Uh, which is Wilcox, about 80 miles before Rusty's, and that will let me get the X topped all the way up so that even if I can't plug in uh, or I can't plug in for very long at Rusty's, I'll still have enough to get back to Wilcox to charge up before I drop down into Arizona, um, into Sunnizona, Arizona, which is where my buddy's observat excuse me, a buddy's observatory is. So yeah, for the whole chart or for the whole trip, I would have only needed about an hour to or about an hour and fifteen to an hour and thirty minutes of charge time added to the trip in order to make it. That's the beauty of those Tesla superchargers. Let's see if I can. Yeah, there it is. Yep. So that's what I was just talking about. And now I can't get it to go away. Lots of vibrating road. Avert your eyes. Don't look at my speed there, Red Jack. State Trooper had somebody pulled over. Not a fun day. And it looks like my internet's gone again, for the most part. Yeah, Red Jag, I, I didn't know you were guessing for the whole trip. I think Lynn was talking about, I, I took Lynn to be guessing at individual charge stops. Ooh, Red Jag, you got a Model Y performance. Nice. Congratulations. Did you trade in the I-Pace or do you still have the I-Pace as well?
and it looks like my internet's kind of mostly almost back. So Red Jack, in case you didn't hear, uh, congratulations on the Model Y. Uh, I'm curious if you traded your iPace in for the Model Y or if you've got both now. Oh, you have both. Ah, uh, Mary got the new Tesla. Nice. How does she like it? <laughs> Another passing zone here. Speaking of a Model Y, right there went one. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I, I figured she would. I'm betting Mary doesn't uh, put her foot all the way through the floor most of the time, though. Uh, I know her and Lenann are generally uh, shock and uh, aggressive movement adverse. Yay, divided highway again. Uh oh, only for a little bit. Yep, yeah, I figured. That's good though. The, the Tesla is a great drive uh, whether you're aggressive or not. Augusto's asking David if he's going to make a live drive. Augusto, I think he, in case he's not online still, um, he does intend to stream parts of it, but not uh, the full length. Uh, 
I've been drinking too much water. I need to uh, hit the loo again already. Yay, divided highway, quiet road again. How's everybody doing out there? Just uh, tooling away here, driving through an area called Congress, Arizona, evidently, on US 93 South. Heading, well, I'll be stopping in Wickenburg, Arizona for a supercharge. Then I'll be going around the outskirts of Phoenix and then Casa Grande for a, another top up supercharge quick and then on to Wilcox to fully top up and then I'll be in rodeo. <laughs> uh, I did not read that accurately the first time through Red Jag. Oh, come on, David. You're not going to start at 4 a.m. like I tried to do this morning? I made it only by like 4.15, 4.20, by the way. Looks like I may have cut out. I was ribbing David for not starting off at 4 in the morning like I was trying to today. Ah, dang, that bandwidth dropped out again. Oh, well. Well, this seems ill-advised. Oh, it's not running. There it is. So this guy towing a boat. I'm doing 73. He's easily in the uh, 80 mile an hour range. So did that rear cam work when I switched to it? Yeah, it did for a little bit. What I need to do, David, <laughs> David is uh, upset if he needs to get up before 9 a.m., yeah. Yeah, I'm usually up by 7. Uh, well, awake by 7. But, you know, whatever. Oh. 
Well, I was getting ready to say, David, I think one of my next uh, time suck projects is to reverse engineer the Blackview cloud protocol, if I can, and see if I can't create a Blackview cloud server emulator so that we don't have to be on their cloud. Looks like I have a... Okay, good. It did put the logo or the icon there. Hey, Red Jag. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, I wish you uh, luck and safety, my friend. Um, yep, eight more months. Get to retire. Congrats. doesn't look as close in that camera view as it does in my rear view mirror, but uh, that guy is pretty close. He's itching to pass, I'm sure. Uh-oh, reduce speed ahead. Yep, there he goes. I'm glad he waited till it got to uh, a passing area. I really expected him to pass. I mean, there were passing areas he could have used. I was expecting him to use those before we got to this double lane. Yay, traffic circle. Now enter the roundabout and take the second exit. I like roundabouts. Traffic circle onto US 93 South. Continue on US 93 South for four miles. I was tooling along on a soon Sunday day. I know that's not the real lyrics, but.
whatever that wood had, was had uh, glass packs. Uh, David, how long before my first charge up? I already had my first charge up. Uh, it was in um, uh, Kingman, Arizona. And my next charge up is here in just a few minutes. Uh, mostly because I want to use an alternate path to what the Tesla is telling me and uh, vary my charge frequency a little bit. So my next one's here in just another few minutes. Um, and uh, I'll be doing a quick bio break there as well. I'm not sure how long a few minutes is actually now that I'm looking at it. Oh, five minutes. Five minutes from now. So Brian asked, can I charge at my telescope shed? Technically, yes, but very slowly. Uh, I only have about 20 kilowatt hours of battery capacity at the shed that I could charge from. Uh, but the shed is at Rusty's RV Ranch, and I can charge there, but it's not going to be as convenient because I'm going to have the car out at the shed to do most of the work and then be back just to sleep so up there at Rusty's. And actually David I brought adapters I can use a 50 amp a 30 amp or a 15 amp uh, whatever is available and get at least some juice while I'm there. In half a mile at the traffic circle take the first exit onto North Tegner Street. So I technically have another 100 miles, 107 miles of range left, which it may actually say on my screen if, uh, if that's updated. But again, I'm, I'm altering, staggering my charges a little bit differently than what Tesla is recommending. Now turn right onto East Monte Vista Trail. Now make a U-turn to stay on East Monte Vista Trail. So uh, six tenths of a mile to my charge stop here. Wow, it drops down to 20 miles an hour. And that dude's walking 25 miles an hour. He's speeding. In 1,000 feet, your destination will be on the right. It was on the left. Yes, it is. It's right here. Yay, superchargers! In six 
500 feet, slight right onto North Valentine Street. Now turn left onto North Techno Street. All right. I am going to plug in and then go uh, utilize some facilities. So I will be back shortly and you guys get to enjoy this little bio break notice and silence.
And I'm back. There we are. How's everybody doing? Let's see what we got in chats here. <laughs> I should add RSSI and RSS RSRP, yeah. <coughs> Um, yeah, David says you can watch the card for me. Yep. Yeah, it, it's always, I don't know, it always seems odd, mostly because I have a laptop and a big, uh, not a big camera, but an action camera sitting here. Um, it draws a little more attention than just the Tesla charging does, which already draws a lot of attention. The laptop would be a quick smash and grab, which would not be good. Yeah, RSSI and RSRP. Um, I can do that with the coach when we're on the road. It's a little tougher to do in this specific config, but I'll, I'll look into that. Oh, it says it's charging at zero amps. That's unfortunate. But 347.5 miles per hour charging rate. That's a little old data. It's now dropped down to uh, 271 miles per hour of charge rate. Which is odd. There's nobody else plugged in. I was trying to get a hold of the streaming protocol that Tesla uses, but uh, it's not as available now as it used to be. Also thought about trying to add a graph of uh, something, speed, battery level, charge discharge rate, something. We shall see. The other good thing is with um, when we got this Tesla and because we had the previous Tesla, uh, I get free unlimited supercharging forever on this vehicle. Uh, so this trip cost me zero dollars, zero dollars in fuel, electricity. Looks like AT&T is fairly uh, heavily loaded in this area. Not very good bandwidth out of them.
That's interesting. I would have thought the action camera would have provided audio, but it's not sending any audio signal. I'm going to see what Google Maps says I should do from here, since I'm going to ignore the Tesla navigation a little bit. Whew, I am tired. Did not sleep nearly enough last night. Tried to go to bed early, just couldn't get to sleep. And then, even though I had my alarm set and I knew that, I was still clock watching. So it never felt like I really got much sleep. Oh yeah, I was going to look at the maps. Okay, yep, that's what I thought. So I'm going all the way. <clears throat> the Tesla navigation wants me to take 74 across, pick up 17, and go south straight down through the heart of Phoenix. Google Maps, which I think is a smarter option, says to continue on 60 until I hit 303, and then take 303 south to 10, and then down and around Phoenix. I like that idea way better. Way more gooder. And I had another couple of stops here. So I have six hours left on the drive. Hundred and fourteen miles to the next supercharger. And then one hundred and forty seven miles from that one. And then I'll top up and be 80 miles outside of Rusty's.
Wonder why it's not having me stop at Casa Grande. Nice. Now turn left onto North Tegner Street. Okay, I'm good to go. So I'm gonna eject and be right back. Alrighty, get buckled in. And I actually thought he had a stop sign. He did In not. 500 feet, turn left onto East Wickenburg Way. And now the Tesla software is actually taking me the route that I wanted to go before. So it's routing me through 303 and down south around Phoenix instead of through Phoenix. In 500 feet, bear right to stay on East Wickenburg Way. Now they are right to stay on East Wickenburg Way. Yes, I did not use the uh, the new hot phrase for opening my charge port. Uh, I should have moved that vacuum while I was stopped. I didn't think about it.
two thirty nine a gallon for propane. It's actually pretty much the same it's been for the last five years it seems. Sixty five again. And divided highway, so I get autopilot at my offset speed. Yay, autopilot. Yay, divided highway. sure I have my wallet. Again, that thinking of things that you may have not remembered to grab on your way out even though you intended to. Not having the wallet would have been particularly bad in some circumstances, of course, like needing to buy anything or needing to prove that you're allowed to drive a vehicle. Eh, just little things. Yes, David. Free super. Why did it not show up on the screen? Hold on. Technical difficulty. There we go. Yes, free supercharger. And it did do quickly. Um, from there, I. In that time, I went from 105 miles of range up to, I think it was close to 200 miles of range. So I put in almost, well, let's call it 80 miles. I put in 80 miles of range in that time frame, whatever that was, which was legitimately just enough for me to go use the restroom, wash my hands, of course, uh, and then research the next stop. And, uh, yeah, get back on the road. Oh, and now that's stopped. Ah, uh, your data connection is disconnected, it says. That's no bueno. More AT&T, bad area. The Tesla says it's 3G, and since I locked the mobile hotspot out of 3G, it is disconnected. Hey, good. David says he, says he still sees me. I'm alive. Oh, but the front video stopped again.
and now the stream died. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And uh, likely to be the case, <clears throat> at least until we get down in closer to uh, Phoenix. Which uh, looks like about 18 miles. <laughs> I'm not even getting frames per second. It's seconds per frame. Awesome. Oh, hey, wait. I was back for a second. Yeah, the only thing keeping the stream alive at all right now is my T-Mobile. Uh, the AT&T link is... Oh, wait. Looks like it's... Oh, it's come back, too. AT&T is back. Yay, data. It's funny, um, for those that aren't familiar with the autonomous driving progress and how all that's going, um, I saw a headline the other day that someone from Google's Waymo was poking at Tesla Autopilot saying that they were doing better in 2010 than Tesla does now. And that may be accurate for an extremely small section of road like you know 10 square miles around their headquarters that they were mapping and and navigating every day. Maybe in 2010 they were better at that. But on the open road, I highly, highly doubt that that was accurate. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, John just asked, uh, he said he wondered how wagon trains found their way west without the internet. I don't know, man. I uh, I guess autopilot in horses was uh, pretty accurate. I, maybe they just wandered in circles for a bit or I don't know. They already had Starlink back then. That's what it was. Link. They could look up see the stars and knew how to get there. Of course in that time frame they were probably all worried about falling off the edge of the earth at any moment but who knows. And no AT&T again. 
Oh, but this does. Interesting. <laughs> Glad you enjoyed the Starlink reference, David. Road's a little rougher out here. <clears throat> Doesn't help that I'm in the slow lane, but uh, I got somebody in the left lane coming up on my corner. <laughs> John, let us see. Yeah, here. Let... Here, you ready? Driving with my eyes closed. And now it's changing lanes all on its own. Not touching anything. Don't know if you can see both hands. Yeah, I guess you can. <laughs> so it changed lanes and turned off the turn signal. It's doing its thing. I'm not using my knees either. I'm not cheating. Now I'm putting my hand back on the steering wheel because it will ask me to check in with it if I don't. Another 10 miles to 303 South. Get another truck speed more than he should. Oh, that cam is offline, it seems. <laughs> yeah John uh, unless something way better comes along uh, I do plan to be using Tesla for a long time autopilot is really tough to beat and it's only getting better. Literally, every software update they push, it gets better and more capable. Uh, and there are beta drive, beta users that have full self-driving, hands-off. You get in at home, tell it your destination, and you get out at your destination. With so zero driver input. Uh, you know, there's still some edge cases and still some quirks. You do still have to be alert. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's coming.
Seems the speed limit went back up and I weren't aware. Maybe it was while I had my eyes closed, John. I don't know why I do that. Um, the version that I have will handle, so here, let me put this on screen. So John asked, does it handle road work? Uh, and do you have to go off the road and go around, etc.? Um, the version I have, like, it'll follow cones if you, like, there's road work and you have to shift lanes or go across the median to the oncoming lanes or something like that. Um, it'll handle that to an extent. Uh, but it, it will do most of that, if not all of that. As far as, like, if they want you to, <coughs> like, take a detour and go around and come back or something, um, not as much. Well, this version of autopilot, definitely not. The full self-driving beta, uh, that should, it, it may not handle that exact scenario, a, a blind left turn um, across, you know, lanes of traffic and stuff. So it, it it's really quite capable at this point, cases where it gets confused or whatever. So you still have to be paying attention. Um, and uh, John doing a hundred with my eyes closed. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, you can't engage autopilot above ninety. So ninety with my eyes closed, we could try at some point. I hope uh, Red Jack's not still watching. Yes, once you've gone autopilot, you never go back. That is true. That guy's in a hurry. Hey, Jim. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Yeah, how hope uh, things are going well for you down in Texas. Uh, thanks for checking in. Just coming down in towards Phoenix now. So uh, about three miles before I hit the 303 loop to go down around Phoenix. Looks like somebody fell. Two other people were going to help her up, but she was waving them off. New England weather, yeah, definitely. It's you have to be dedicated, I think, to live in New England. Uh, you really have to either really enjoy the snow, or uh, maybe that's your yearly workout is when you're shoveling snow or something. Ninety in San Francisco, that's wow. That's hotter than I thought it'd be up there 
at this time of year. In one mile, turn right to take it over there. We are free to loop south way. Alright, so let's see here. Oh no, it's not on navigate on. Okay. So the other thing on secondary roads, it doesn't do what's called navigate on autopilot, which is what mine is capable of right now. Um, and that is, like it would stop for this stop sign, um, but it won't likely take the turn to get on to 303 South. John, that's unfortunate, buddy. Uh, sorry to hear that. But, you know, it, it's not for everybody. And right now is really a great time to sell. Um, there's a shortage in the marketplace and people are paying basically retail price for used RV. Like what the price of the car coach was new when they're buying used RVs. So um, hate to hear that, but at least you figured it out and uh you know it's a good time to get out of it oh so not in san francisco itself but in northeast bay and antioch yeah okay that makes a little more sense still though it seems i mean it seems warm to me all right so yeah it's not gonna do that so i'm doing it Now on the interstate autopilot, the navigate on autopilot system, it will change lanes for you automatically to get to the interchanges you need to take uh, and on ramps and off ramps and all that stuff. Let me see if I can get ahead of some people. Not gonna make it in front of this RV though. That's okay, I don't wanna startle him. And I didn't really punch it there. Um, I got too much junk in my trunk right now. No, nothing I want to break. <laughs> Lenan sent me some road trip emojis. Wow. It seems, uh, my chosen speed is below the locals. Got 12 miles to the I-10 East exit. So just be cruising along here. Might be time for another snack.
Wow, John, yeah. Um, I haven't heard that. I'm not really up on that side of things. Uh, but yes, I imagine that would be quite expensive as an add-on. Hey, John, do you know when that's supposed to, like, when they're th saying that's going to go into effect? Most of that type of stuff. drive around Phoenix without thinking of a good place in Eleanor Shellstra. such and some of the water bottles are frozen to help keep the rest of the cooler cool and that happened to be the one that I grabbed to fill this with alright sorry guys this is going to be loud smashing a bottle kind of stuff usually has it takes a while to get implemented and then there's usually a window a long duration window to get it actually in place and required but I, I don't think you'll have any uh, risk of getting hit by that before you sell yours
There's also a lot of FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt uh, spread by people who aren't really uh, climate change friendly. So he may have just been uh, spreading something he heard on from QAnon or some BS. Maybe. I don't know. So we'll see here. I'm going to let the X drive this as much as I can, unless something gets really scary. I have my hand on it, of course, because it makes me check in with it, but I'm not doing any of this. So I did not put the turn signal on. It did that. I changed lanes. It knows the lane it needs to be in for the exit. So uh, we'll let it do its thing here. Now take exit 104A on the right. So far, so good. 104A, we are on it. One complaint I've personally had and seen other people have is that usually on stuff like this, it's way too aggressively slow. Does not seem to be the case right now. We're rocketing into a 40 mile an hour curve doing 75. So, yeah, I mean, I would do that just like that, actually. I, again, I'm not touching brake throttle, nothing it's doing at all. Yeah. That was good. Accelerating out of the curve. Beautiful. Let's see if it merges into traffic. That gets scary even with a person doing it, let alone a barely aware AI. It did that all on its own. Very good. So Phil is uh, bringing in uh, the statute here. Let's see if we can get up oh, and it's getting on over because we're not going as fast as I want to be going. Very good. All right, so Phil says, California's truck and bus rule, state's key law regulating heavy-duty diesel emissions. And it's, it's changing lanes again, by the way. Still not me. I'm going to slow it down a little bit because it was set more for that other less-accessed highway. Anyway, 
Uh, by January 1, 2023, nearly all trucks and buses will need to have 2010 model year engines or the equivalent. Wow, that's good to know. Yeah, that'll get expensive for those older buses. Um, now, my understanding or my expectation, Phil, is that's going to be required of vehicles registered in California. Like people driving through California that aren't registered there, will they still have to meet that same requirement? Do you know? <laughs> John, yeah. Uh, there are people who have created and sold um, weights that you hang from the steering wheel to simulate uh, the pressure from your hands. So it's, yeah, I, I do not uh, advocate that because it is still very much driver assist, not fully autonomous driving. John says, hopefully that rule will apply to commercial only and not RV. Yeah, that, that would be good as well. And Phil is going to take a look and see if he can confirm if it's only registered vehicles in California or if it's all vehicles passing through as well. All right, so I'm going to decrease my follow distance. I was all the way out at seven, seven step, and I've now decreased it down to three. Maybe I should even go down to, yeah, I'm all the way down to one now. Uh, but I am at the speed that I've set. Twenty twenty three, man, that is coming up quick. So evidently California was thinking of making all motorhomes entering California have the new exhaust, but not going to happen now. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, one's not registered in California. State Trooper passing along on my left. I know driving through Phoenix in the motor coach is really uh, nerve wracking because there are areas that have the 65 mile an hour speed limit that have really hairpin curves and they're not marked. There's two spots that I've hit that on the same trip with the, mo with the motor coach. That was really uh, nerve wracking because I mean, the motor coach has so much movement um, I was really, uh, yeah, it, it threw some doors open and, uh, I was surprised nothing broke.
<laughs> yeah, John, uh, at least 10 miles under for those curves. Yeah. Uh, these specifically are crazy. Uh, most, I, I will say most of the curves that are labeled on the interstates and stuff with the yellow speed signs, um, if I stick to those, our coach usually does really, really well. But uh, these here in Phoenix where they're unlit, un, unmarked, man, they are torture. So David says he's got his Mevo settings all set up in YouTube and live stream the next three days. Uh, not all the time, but starting at 11 a.m. tomorrow and then 10 a.m. Central Monday and Tuesday. Yeah, you'll be in Eastern time by then, so. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, won't be able to remote produce much for you. Uh, I'll be doing my own thing a little bit, but we'll see you soon enough. Well, not soon enough, but we'll see you soon. Yep, and it's moving over here. Well, it started to abort that move, so I took over. Uh, it thought that truck was coming over too much, so it it was going to abort the lane change. I took over and forced it because the truck wasn't really drifting that much. Yeah, uh, I think that's uh, the plan at this point. Oh, okay. So the truck or the the X is actually trying to maneuver over to get off. I'm actually going to take over for this part. Too many moving vehicles. And we're going to 202 loop north. Oh, nope, that's south. I'll wait on that one. How can that be 202 loops north? 138. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, for some reason, it's saying the loop north, but this is. Yeah. This has to be it. And it wouldn't make any sense to go north back into Phoenix. Yep, this is what it had on the map. Let autopilot take it again. That was uh, confusingly marked or mismarked or remarked. Okay, so back to the show here. <laughs> Phil says uh, commercial trucks can't even be registered in California already if they don't meet new def specs. Interesting. Yeah. And John says, where are we going after Kentucky? 
uh, going to make it California around San Francisco, Sacramento would be great to me. Yeah, um, not going to be making it to California this year. Uh, we're going to end up, um, so after Kentucky, we're heading up to uh, New York, and we're going to be there for a bit. And then we haven't made specific plans yet, but probably starting to head back out towards Vegas. And uh, hello, Beth. Thanks for stopping by. Hope you uh, are enjoying the scenery and uh, glad uh, glad you were able to join. So, yeah, now I'm on the south west ish side of Phoenix. I don't know. I'm coming around the southwest corner of Phoenix on this route and uh, going to be stopping at Casa Grande for just a quick top up and then head on to Wilcox after that to get close to full before I head on down to Rodeo, New Mexico. Man. These Arizona drivers are uh, in it to win it. I guess I'll speed up a little bit. <laughs> Beth, how fast is the Tesla going? Yeah, I'm doing about 77 right now. Um, takes a... The, the display up at the top of the feed come, is a, a little fuzzy comparatively. Uh, but yeah, going about 77, 76, 77. Um, in 75 mile an hour zones, I'm usually up around 83 or so. Curious how many people are watching out there in uh, YouTube land. I can't see the uh, studio area to see, but I'm going to throw a dart at the board and say it's around six, five or six people. So it's interesting, the Carl's Jr. in Kingman, Arizona, where I went into the restroom, uh, they had face mask required signs on the door. The Brasha's, which is a grocery store that I went into the restroom while I was in uh, Wickenburg, they said, their sign said, masks recommended. So... John, thanks. We got 11 likes. That's cool. And Sebastian says we got 9 to 10 watching. <laughs> Beth, yes, you have gotten a ride in this Tesla going much faster than that. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, if it weren't for traffic, I probably could make it in a lot less time. <laughs> hey, Dennis. Yeah, uh, I just... I decided why not it helps pass the time and uh, makes the trip seem a lot shorter keep keeps me entertained um, and I know a lot of people enjoy it so hey why not gusto says time where there were several accidents with Tesla vehicles the manufacturers have already solved this problem uh, so 
I, I want to be clear on this, and this is something that is not well represented by the news, unfortunately. Um, Tesla vehicles that have been in accidents that were on autopilot, even if that were the case, if, if it was an accident while on autopilot, it was still the driver's fault because the Tesla system is not full autonomous driving at this point. Um, it has loads of warnings. It makes you check in with it every 15 to 30 seconds. And if you don't, if you ignore it too long, it won't let you use autopilot. It'll kick it out for the rest of the drive. Um, it also, like if you completely ignore it, even after it, it says you've ignored it too much, it'll turn on your hazard lights and pull, and stop on the road. <clears throat> so you get attention if you are in a medical situation. Um, so yeah, and the other types of accidents that they've had uh, that are commonly reported are people accelerating into walls. <clears throat> uh, <laughs> so they mistakenly stomp the throttle instead of the brake. And in a Tesla, when you stomp the throttle, it absolutely goes as Beth will attest from her ride in this one. Um, so you, you don't have a lot of margin for error if you've screwed up and stomped the throttle instead of stomping the brake for some reason. But, uh, so from, a from that perspective and, and in general, Tesla is absolutely getting better and better with each software upgrade. Um, they're now so good that even if you're not on autopilot and you drift to a line, like let's say I were to drift over to this left line without the turn signal on, it would correct the steering and bring this bring the vehicle back to the center of the lane, even if I'm not on autopilot. Um, there are certain scenarios that it, it's never going to be great at, um, but it it is getting much much better. Oh hey, that's good to know. Thanks, Dennis. <laughs> I was wondering if I would need to uh, coordinate with Laura to pick up the key on my way in, and I was worried I might be a little beyond her normal uh, end of day time, so glad to hear. <laughs> David, yeah. Uh, yeah, It the streaming is uh, is entertaining to me. I, I enjoy the challenge and the, the interaction. <laughs> Beth, yes, it absolutely will plant you back. And yeah, most new Tesla owners don't understand. Yeah, they, they usually figure it out pretty quickly, though. <laughs> it's getting lively in here now, man, in any of the reported incidents. Uh, it's... It's been the driver applied the throttle kind of thing, not the car did it. Hey, Sebastian, thanks for checking in. Uh, I'm glad you were able to hang out with me for a little bit on the drive. Oh, I lost service there for a little bit. I, I didn't even realize. It is, uh, I think, getting around the outskirts, like distant away from Phoenix. So it wouldn't surprise me if uh, data comes in and out. That's cool, John. I, I'm curious if you don't mind sharing what your zero to 60 time is, and then I'll tell you mine. I don't want to tell you until you tell me yours, though. <laughs> Low video quality. Even right now, David, it's been green on my end for a while. I'm surprised if it's uh, 
I may need to stop and start the stream on my end or something to get it back up to speed, but I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, John, I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah, this will, uh, this X, I, I did, we intend to keep this one for a while, so we splurged when we got it. Uh, so we got the performance version. So this X will 0 to 60 in about 2.8 seconds, and it'll run a quarter mile in about 11.3. Oh, now I'm getting some bad. All right. Thanks, Beth, for checking in. We'll uh, catch you later, and uh, glad you were able to, to join in for a little bit. <laughs> yes, John. Uh, holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if he's holy crapping at the price of the upgrade or at the performance of the upgrade, but it could go either way. Bye, Beth. <laughs> yeah see david it, it could really go either way uh you know it's hard to tell which he was holy crapping at i do seem to be going through some spotty signal here so my apologies uh and it's both at&t and uh t-mobile in order for me to have dropouts have to be poor so ah john the speed yes it is bananas it, it's it's a rocket sled is what it feels like um, so David just an FYI I have full bars of AT&T but it must just be saturated tower And let me see if my T-Mobile is still... Yeah, T-Mobile is holding up too, but... Yeah, see, it's doing this lane change on its own. It slowed down to be behind the car because it's getting ready to uh, exit coming up here on exit 53. My team or T Mobile still says it's tethering. Um, so John says uh, DC motors are very powerful. Yes, they are, except my Tesla doesn't have DC motors. My Tesla has uh, both motors, front and rear, are three-phase AC synchronous motors. Um, now, Tesla, or uh, David's Tesla, they change the front motor. Why are you doing this? Uh, they change the front motor to a uh, permanent magnet DC reluctance motor. <coughs> and it gives a little more efficiency at freeway speeds. Um, but mine is three-phase AC induction motors. I took over because it was wavering a little too much for my taste. Now take exit 53 on the right. Now take the interstate 10 east ramp on the right. In 500 feet, take the interstate 10 east ramp on the right toward Tucson. Uh, 
All right. Once we get merged back into traffic here, I'll start uh, chatting some more. There's some of that acceleration for you, John. All right. There we go. Okay, back on autopilot. Uh, so let's see here. Um, bad service area. Yep, no reason, nothing like us. Oh yeah, yeah. The live streams, bandwidth. I mean, it, there's really all we can do. Um, good now. Try call after your exit. Uh, car has an inverter too. Yes, John. So um, if you look at a uh, like in Tesla showrooms, and then you can find videos of them online. It'll show the, the transaxle. Um, it's actually not a transaxle. It's not a transmission. It's um, the axle with the reduction, single speed reduction gear to, bolted to a motor. And then on the back side of the motor is the inverter setup. And it's a digitally controlled inverter. Uh, so it actually will vary the current and rotation speed based on the conditions that it senses based on the, how much power the motor is pulling uh, compared to your speed and rotation and all this stuff. It, it's one of the most advanced traction controls I've ever seen in that it can literally sense the slip of the wheel in microseconds kind of timing because when the wheel slips, the RPM increases, but the current drops off. So it can sense that current drop and vary the speed at which it's applying that rotational field around the motor so that it will maintain maximum grip. So that's why, and, and that's the other thing too, it never to be able to get that zero to 60 time. Anybody can climb in the seat, put it in launch mode and stomp the throttle and it will absolutely nail that zero to 60. Um, and there will be very little wheel slip. You'll hear it ch -ch 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 as it's gripping and, and taking off, and that's it. Uh, let's see here. Yes, David, it would have taken the exit. I just uh, got tired of it turning on the turn signal and then aborting and then turning on and aborting. Um, it, it was just being indecisive, so... <laughs> John says he loves that acceleration that he could feel it. Uh, that's pretty cool. I, I don't know how it translates on video, but it was, uh, I could feel it here. Hey, Mark, glad you could join me. That, you don't think it would, uh, yeah, yeah, nothing, nothing Rudy's excited by is, is on the feed, unfortunately. I'm not thrilling enough for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It is weird not having Lenann with the cats. Yeah, that's true. Um, she uh, she she drew the the short straw and had to stay home. Although that's that's not accurate. She wanted to stay home. She she would not have wanted to be on this trip. Um, uh, John, so yes, it is absolutely very good driving in the snow. Uh, very little slip. As a matter of fact, it has a uh, snow and mud mode where it will move a bit beyond where it senses that slipping occurring to help free from, you know, if you really get into a stuck situation. But uh, it is all wheel drive and it senses the wheel speeds and everything and dynamically adjusts and all that. Uh, they, they're actually so good in the snow that it's difficult to get to do a donut or anything with them because they really just 
grip and, and take control of everything. Oh, wait, we're 73 miles an hour now, so I can go on up, or 75 is the speed limit, so I can go up to 83. Yay! I love high speed limits. I was wondering why the guy was on my butt so much back there. I thought I had a pimple. Yeah, I don't either, David. It's uh, it's very much a uh, long drive. Ah, uh, bummer. Yes, David is correct. We do try not to be in the snow. I'm going to cut it a little close on this one just so I can get in here. And I would not normally have made it. I would not have done that, what the car just did, which is move to the slow lane to pass a bunch of slow people in the left lane when they're all just queued up behind trucks and stuff. I, that's not my personal driving style. But it did it, so I needed to find a hole. Brian asks, what are the beep boop and boo beep sounds? <laughs> um, so the increasing pitch one, the doo doo, uh, that's engaging autopilot and boo boo is disengaging autopilot. Uh, it has a few more noises it does as well, but that's, that's those two specifically. Dennis, yes, you're absolutely right. Part of having an RV is avoiding the snow and ice as much as you can. Um, it's also interesting, uh, and I'll share this little tidbit, in the autopilot settings for you and instantly over in the other lane, like it didn't it didn't it wasn't a smooth transition across in the lane change and uh, scared hell out of people so they they tweaked it back a lot but I I think the actual motion of the lane change is sound and good but the time delay before it takes the lane changes is, is where I would request improvement Oh man, lost all video in the, uh, when I was talking about autopilot setting. That's a bummer. Uh, David, I think we discovered it uh, in separately in parallel, actually. Uh, Lenan had figured it out for um, astronomy, and then I mentioned that we were going there to Dennis and his wife in Tianesta, California, because we were both up there. That's where I first met Dennis. And um, it was, well, it's funny. Lenan already had reservations to me. I told Lenan about it, and she said, yeah, we're going there. I'm like, oh, okay. Hey Augusto, thanks for uh, confirming that I'm back and I may not be back now. I got a red bubble again for connectivity. I
Uh, David, your first link didn't work because there was a slash before the dot. So it was outside our bubble slash dot com instead of dot com. Oh, actually, you know what? That may have been inserted on my end. I don't know. Hard to say. Uh, if you can hear me, I'm about uh, 10 miles from my next supercharger stop, so I should be able to get some testing with the data services done and uh, maybe get some connectivity back at that point. Yeah, John, it is very inexpensive to stay at Rusty's, uh, although you'll spend a lot more time going to get groceries because it's an hour to the closest actual grocery store. Oh, it looks like I have data back. Yay, data! And uh, it looks like my Tesla data up at the top is staying up to date pretty well, too. Um, so that's real close to what the Tesla is saying as far as my rated miles left. Uh, but again, I'm only about nine miles now out. Actually, David Rusty is the owner. <laughs> oh, Rusty's, the park is real nice. Yes. Um, it You have to have your expectations on what it is. It's a... It's an RV park that caters to astronomers and dark skies. It is very remote, very long pull throughs, like 200 foot long pull throughs. Um, and we, we do enjoy it out here. Uh, my hope is to not need to bring the coach down this time around. Uh, we'll probably stop by, by Rusty's on our way back through from our northeast loop. So can everybody hear me okay? Am I live like my indicator says I am? I seem to be using T-Mobile for this part of the stream. Oh, and drop there for just a minute. Hey, Brian. Thank you for that confirmation. <laughs> uh, I think, David, he still does. Yeah, you definitely beat us by a few years finding Rusty's. Uh, we didn't get out there until... 20, 2018, I think that's when I'm out there, was when I built the, the Astro Shed, so. Yeah, 2018, uh, got there in October. Had only planned to be there a month, extended to three months, decided to build the shed, ended up being there five months. People are getting impatient with whoever's holding up the traffic up here. That's the other thing autopilot really helps with. Impatience and, and frustrated driving. Like, I, I literally don't care. <laughs> I like to be going fast. But, uh, you know, 
the card takes that frustration out. Uh, so John asks, where do you go shopping at Rusty's? Uh, so for pre-COVID, right? I, I don't know about COVID times, but pre-COVID, um, groceries were either an hour south, uh, southwest to Douglas, Arizona, and there's a Walmart there, and maybe another grocery store, but I don't think so. If you want extra selection, you go an hour and 15 minutes northeast to Sterling, New Mexico, if I remember right. Maybe I'm saying that one wrong. Um, anyway, there's another uh, place about an hour and 15 minutes that has multiple grocery stores. They have a, a tractor supply and a couple other things. Uh, a more populated area. Um, man, it's, Sterling seems right, but also wrong at the same time in my head for some reason. Um, it is the same town that the actor who plays Poe on Altered Carbon is from. So if you want confirmation, just look up Altered Carbon cast, look for Poe, see where that guy is from, and that's Silver City. I've just figured it out. Silver City, not not Sterling. So Silver City, New Mexico is where hour and 15 minutes northeast. Deming is uh, about an hour and 30 minutes more along the interstate. Uh, Silver City is more diagonally up and into the mountains, if memory serves. Looks like somebody smoke some tires or brakes or is on fire oh yeah whoever it is is off the side of the road and there's already assistance there no nope, don't do that actually I need to do that but I'll do that because this is my exit coming up Yeah, John, it really is a desolate area. Um, but that's what it takes to get dark skies is remote. If there were more people and more stuff around, it wouldn't be dark skies. Uh, Mark, how am I doing as far as my original time schedule? Uh, pretty good, I think. Um, I'll have to check and see what my the rest of my drive time is. But yeah, I think I'm doing all right. Now I'm wondering if, well, I got 1.2 miles, so it's not this overpass. I was wondering if the truck fire was going to be blocking the uh, off-ramp. But it looks like he's moved on, actually, because it was well before this. Yeah, it smells like burning oil. I don't think that was him. Yeah, whoever it is is still way on up here. Evidently, they're still driving. My guess is he's trying to make it to the exit for repairs. Sorry, I'm not really paying much attention on the chat right this moment. I'm getting off here at the exit and now take exit 194. getting to the supercharger. Oh no, he's still driving.
So I guess uh, he decided the oil he was burning was okay. So he took, he's still going. Oh, damn. Somebody had a big accident there. In 500 feet, turn right. Now turn right. Yeah, this supercharger is tucked back in behind Culver's here. If you weren't looking for it, oh dang, there's lots of uh, cars parked, lots of cars charging. So let's see, 3B, 2A, 2B, well, none of them are a good option, but I will pick this one. All right, I'm going to go plug in, and I'll be right back. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, it's it's easy to get impatient, but oh yeah, oh yeah, right. <laughs> it's like, hey, get out of the way. <laughs> I know that that is the one thing. Yeah, it's like you can't quickly jump in the back and grab something that you forgot. Yep. <laughs> Have a great drive. Yep. A nice lady. Evidently, second Tesla owner. At least she said she'd had an ex. Wasn't able to get her uh, charge cable unplugged. So I made her aware that, number one, the car has to be unlocked, and number two, uh, you have to wait till the light goes white. That means it's unlocked, and then you can unplug it. And yeah, this charge limit, or this station, high usage supercharger station, charging limit set to 80%, adjust, adjust limit if needed. Uh, so let me then have it navigate to Rusty's. It should route me through Wilcox supercharger. See, it's wanting me to go to the Tucson supercharger, which is on at, um, there's a Flying J, Pilot Flying J there that has a supercharger. But I'm hoping to get up high enough to make it further.
<laughs> so that's interesting. It's charging at 363 miles per hour of charge. It's 363 volts on this supercharger. It's not reading out the current, the amp output of the supercharger, but that's okay. Um, I can look here. It is 109 kilowatts. Which also makes sense based on the mile per hour rated range. 109 divided by... 363 so it's charging at 300 yeah yeah so it's using a range of 300 watt hours per mile which is a little low for my tesla but that's okay i got lucky i picked so superchargers um sorry i whacked the mic there um, the superchargers are set up in pairs. Each pair shares a supercharger converter bank. And when you plug in on one of the pair individually, you get full charge current. So like if this one's rated for 150 kilowatts, you could get a full 150 kilowatts. If there are two people on it, then it, it dynamically shares the capacity between the two vehicles. So whichever one is the lowest charge will get more juice to ramp it up quickly. And the one with the higher charge will get less juice. Uh, and then if they're equal, then they'll both get the same amount and come up together. But um, so when you're look when you're pulling into a supercharger, it's kind of strategic. If there are multiple people there, you want to try to hit a pair that's not occupied by the other one. And they're labeled like... Um, 2A and 2B, uh, t the 2 number means that they these two share a charging pack. Um, the lady that was that just left was on the shared one for mine. So she was on 2B and I'm on 2A, and it was not to be. She left. Awesome. Anyway, so yeah, I'm going to go... Um, use the facilities real quick and then I will be back I don't know if it will um, how well it'll stay connected let me see what AT&T is doing right now that it says it's LTE it might hold um, so I'm pulling the T-Mobile pack and gonna go run and use the restroom for a moment and uh, I will leave you with the nice little bio break notice after these messages, we'll be right back. Actually, for giggles, I'm going to leave the mic on. So if somebody breaks into the car, tell me what their voice sounds like.
All right. Let me get uh, mics back up. And get things back here. Ta-da! I'm back. Phone plugged back in. Excuse me. Okay. Let me clear out a lot of the stuff. I have uh, all the chats coming into a view that I have up on the screen and um, I try to whittle it down after we've talked through the chats so that there's less on screen. <laughs> I'm all the way back like two hours old that I haven't gotten cleared out yet. I think I need to figure out a uh, delete from here down option. Okay, now let me check my travel time from here. So it says I have uh, 3 hours 25 minutes left on my drive. After I leave here, I'm going to supercharge at Wilcox and then head on into Rusty's. So yeah, I'm doing real good on time. I believe it was Mark that was asking that. Man, we had up to 12 people on the chat at one or on the stream at once. It's pretty good. Looks like David had to drop off. He's got to go keep getting ready to depart tomorrow so we'll see david on the road tomorrow you can catch his live stream starting at 11 a.m central on his youtube channel david bot i'm gonna see if i have a more substantive snack to eat i believe that was the plan Ooh, beef jerky. Some mixed nuts. Trash bag. I'll worry about that later. Ah, cashews. Kind of crazy there's so much light pouring in through the falcon wing door that uh i was worried the door was open the falcon wing door was open because sometimes since the key fob can open them um 
it can be a little too easy to bump the key fob and open the that door. I hope she pays attention. I don't think she is. Whew, now it smells like beef jerky in here. In 500 feet, turn left onto East Florence Boulevard. In 500 feet, turn left onto East Florence Boulevard. Yes, David. Internet does suck out in Burleson. Cellular internet.
I'm going to move chargers. So I pulled in and plugged in <clears throat> on the one right next to me. Okay, Let's see if that gets me a little quicker. Indeed, it does. Just a heads up, um, not a lot of people know this, but the superchargers, the way they're numbered, like uh, 2A and 2B, they share a charging bank. And when you plug into one that's already occupied, it splits the pa capacity. So I moved over, so I was getting 160 uh, miles per hour. Now I'm getting 258. Ah, okay, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I just like sharing the info in case, just in case. Uh, it ruins driving anything else. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, and um, this is a 2017, uh, but it's the performance version. So yeah, it it really ruins everything. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, the, um, the way to tell, um, the Y has the same door handles that you do. Yep. Um, but yeah, this, yeah, we love it. We did. Yeah, we custom ordered it. Um, we we had a Model S before, so this is our second Tesla. Yeah. Um, we wanted, so we got the first one in 2015 before the X came out. And then when the X was released, we moved to it because my wife has uh, fibromyalgia and degenerative disc disease. So it's a lot easier for her to get in and out of. Yep. Yeah. That's. Yep. Yeah, that's the same thing my wife said when we got the Y or the S and then the X came out. She's like, I told you, you should have waited, <laughs> but you know, you live and learn and, and you can never tell, you know, it, Tesla time, it, it could have been three years before the X came out. So same with the Y, the Y they actually came out with ahead of schedule, which was really impressive. Yep. Yeah, no problem. Where, where are you uh, driving to and from? Cool. Nice. Yeah. No, no. Um, my wife and I travel the country full time in a motor coach. Um, it's in Los. My wife and the coach and our fur kids are in Las Vegas right now. Um, I'm on my way down to the boot heel in New Mexico to um, change some parts out on my uh, telescope. I've got an astronomy set up down there that I operate remotely. So. No, we put it in a enclosed car hauler. Yeah, yeah, there's no electric vehicle you can flat tow right now. Yeah, so um, unfortunately, uh, we did have a, we had a Jeep Grand Cherokee first, and that, you know, flat tow all day long. 
and then we went to the S with a trailer and then the X. <clears throat> I... Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it, but it's fine by me. And it, um, compared to towing, uh, like a Grand Cherokee or something, you're not really supposed to back up with one of those attached because the steering wheel will free spin and it'll just start sliding the tires. Um, so having the trailer actually gives us more maneuverability so I can actually back in between trucks at truck stops and stuff. And, um, it, it's, yeah, it's a little longer to hook up and unhook, but aside from that, it's yes. Yeah. I, I generally try to wash the car right before I put it in. And then whenever we get where we're going, I pull it out and it's, you know, sparkling clean. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm a bit of a geek too. So I, I put uh, solar on the car hauler and four Tesla battery modules in the hauler itself and then inverters. So I can technically charge the X inside the trailer from the solar and the batteries that are in it. Yeah. It, yeah, it comes in handy. <laughs> nice. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Yeah, a buddy of mine was just in Houston at uh, uh, MD Anderson. Yeah, he, he got some cancer treatment down there. and um, So, yeah, small world, right? <laughs> All right, nice talking to you. So, uh, sorry about that. We have a chat question. Um, will Tesla allow you to drive away when it's plugged in? No, actually the car itself can sense whenever there's uh, something in the charge port and it will not let you put the vehicle in drive. Matter of fact, here, I'll, I'll hit the brake and you hear that dun dun dun. That was all that was needed. It said unable to drive, remove charge cable. So they, they got that covered. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, we got we got the Rusty's uh, information several times. Yep. So you guys probably heard me uh, maybe too loud, actually. Sorry about that. Uh, telling him about the charging sharing. So when I moved my charge rate sharing with him was 166 miles of range per hour of charge. When I moved over here, it jumped way over 200. I can't remember now what it was, but Oh, 253.8, at least as of a little bit ago, reported by the X. Here's my lovely wife. Hello, hello. Phil, that's what I figured. Yep, they got it. They got that one taken care of. Lenann says she's just popping in between chores. Dennis and uh, Phil both say hello. <laughs> we got Lenann Fan Club chiming in. We got uh, Augusto and Dennis and Phil. I'm going to charge a little longer here. Let's see what the navigation says right now. Okay, so it says if I left right now, I would get to Wilcox Supercharger with 3% battery. 
not exactly in my realm of comfort for uh, that margin of error. So I'm going to wait a little longer. From here to Wilcox, it's 147 miles, saying two hours and seven minutes. It says if I wanted to wait to charge all the way to full, it'd be 35 more minutes. But that's uh, a bit optimistic. Usually the last 1% or 2% takes a really long time because it's um, it has resistors that it can put in line with individual cell groups throughout the pack. And so when you charge it to 100%, it actually starts using those to limit the charge current to certain cell groups so that it can top up all the batteries. Um, so it's a uh, basically an equalization charge equivalent. I thought it was funny and it still is actually all the Tesla's except for maybe the first one that left after I got here that have been at this charging station were all pearl white. I haven't looked at the front of the X to see how bug splattered it is. Since I'm going to be here another few minutes, I think I'll do that. I'll, uh, I'm going to do some uh, waterless wash to get rid of the bugs that are over there. So you guys get to watch me wipe on the front of the car. Yay, fun times. Nope, not the trunk. Actually, I do need to get the trunk too, though. You too. See you later.
Hello, peoples. <laughs> Universal cleaning fluid. Yeah, it's uh, a waterless wash product that has some uh, wax protectant type stuff in it as well. Wow, you guys have been chatting up a storm. Let's see here. I got another few percentage points to charge up, then I'll be on my way. <laughs> I don't know about that. My fan, your fan club is pretty large. Yeah, the pearl white. Uh, <laughs> yeah, trendsetters. Uh, I don't know about that, but okay. Brian, yeah, no, I think I think uh, this is decent here, uh, getting that done. It says it's only 78, but man, it feels a lot warmer when you're out there doing that. Yeah. Um, he actually just won the car like yesterday. It's an older Model S that uh, the previous owner was giving it away as a tax deduction for his business because it was owned by his business because he was upgrading to the newer Model S that has over 500 miles of range. Um, so when he was pulling in, it, it was more to try to help myself because he was going to plug in right next to me and it was going to slow down my charging. Uh, but it helped him as well because he's on his way to Tucson to sell it. So he won it and now he's going to go sell it and put that money back into his business. Anyway, um, but literally seconds later, a guy pulls in onto uh, my partner stall anyway, so. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I don't, I don't need that kind of he headache. Looks like Lynn Ann is heading back to her chorin. Uh, let's see. Yep, universal cleaning fluid. 79 there, yeah. That's uh, warm. Getting warm anyway. All right. Um, it says I'm going to have 11% when I get to Wilcox. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug and hit the road. I will be right back. Woo! 
warm out there. And away we go. Now turn left onto East Florence Boulevard. Uh-oh. I wonder if it's, uh, like a funeral procession or something that they're bringing in off the interstate. Hope there's nothing else going on. <laughs> All right, David. Yep. Uh, enjoy uh, the Magna Shade work. Oh, yeah. Stay awake. Definitely. Can't tell exactly what's going on up here. The guy with the Model S that won it yesterday and selling it today, he said uh, he's really trying hard not to get used to all the cool stuff. <laughs> I said, yeah, good luck with that. Evidently, they're moving his business to um, Ireland. His wife is from Ireland, and evidently with all kinds of uh, immigration stuff that's going on, and then... Uh, the pandemic, everything being shut down. Oh, man, are we not able to actually get through at all? Oh, no, we can't. Okay, good. Come on. Okay, so, oh, this was that accident when I was coming off the interstate. John, yes, when I'm traveling at night, um, or when I've had to travel at night, I absolutely do nap at the superchargers. Um, that's what I did the last time I had to race down here, but that was over a year ago when I was just automating the coat or the uh, shed. And um, I ended up having an automation failure and had to race down there because I broke a big uh, piece of wood that was supporting a part of the shed. That wasn't a good time. Now turn left to take the interstate and east way. So that's good. In the time I, it took me to supercharge, they pretty well have that accident cleaned up.
and back on autopilot. 145 miles to Rex Allen Drive, and we will be charging up at Wilcox before heading on down to Rodeo. I'm actually feeling pretty good with uh, how awake I am and everything and how little sleep I got. Astro Shed sounds like the doghouse. Yeah, it's a pretty kick-ass doghouse, though. You know, if I if I were to have to go to a doghouse, that, that's where I'd want to go. <laughs> From the Jetsons, yes. Uh, very good. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, the guy selling his car actually thanked me for telling him about that one being faster for him because he's trying to meet a guy in Tucson at a certain time, so he wanted to get it charged fully up before he met the guy. So the car opted to go to the right lane around the RV. Oh. It also recognized that the RV was going a lot slower than I was, so it slowed down to make sure that everybody had reaction time in case somebody changed their mind. Yeah, Phil, if I remember right, Astro was the name of their dog, so the Astro Shed was definitely the dog house in the Jetsons. Well played, sir.
if you look up ahead just peeking out from that green sign oh you can't see it there we go all right so now uh, you can't really see it that well yet anyway up ahead uh, just off to the right hand side above the green sign right now is Picacho Peak and there's a state park there and it is the place of the let me see if I can get this right it's definitely the place of the last battle of the Civil War west of the Mississippi but maybe the last battle of the Civil War period if I remember but I can't remember for sure um, but basically the war was over and the troops out here didn't hadn't gotten the memo yet literally had not gotten the memo Uh, so, Phil, um, yes, at idle, um, about 240 watts at idle. And then when it ramps up, it can be in the neighborhood of 380, 400 watts. Um, it's an old hard, or an old server enterprise chassis. Uh, it's the Super Micro 836, which is a 4, yeah, 4U... 36 drive chassis and then I put a brand new um, server ATX board in it from Supermicro with the um, I think it's the AMD Epic 7502 if I remember right to whatever it is it's 30 32 core 64 thread processor uh, 128 gigs of RAM and then I have 12 of the 36 bays populated right now uh, with 16 terabyte disks So I could get away with a lot more power efficient processor and board. Um, and I probably should because I'm not really using that, that much of its capacity, of its capabilities. I'm running 30 or 40 Docker containers and five or six VMs. I need to do more with it because I could use it more for what I do at work. Um, just when I'm working, I'm working on a bunch of other stuff, and when I'm not working, I don't want to be working. So I haven't haven't taken the time to actually stand up infrastructure on my server that I could use uh, from a work perspective. You may not have heard any of that. Looks like uh, cell signals coming in and out. So, Phil, did you hear? I don't know. It, the signal was coming in and out, so I'm not sure if you heard any of the explanation. Okay, cool. Phil got it all. George, yes, it is indeed some beautiful sky. We do like it a lot out here. Uh, matter of fact, it's the beautiful sky is uh, one of the main reasons why we come out here a lot. Old Dual Z on board, Roswell 15 drive case. 
nice yeah that's that's a lot uh a lot more bang for your buck than what i did <laughs> a lot more uh but i was coming from a 16 bay q nap so uh i wanted something bigger anyway i'd already i'd hit the limit of what that and chassis could hold so um yeah i i needed to go big and i decided to go really big but i should have gone less big with the uh motherboard and processor Some interesting paint jobs on RVs you run into. That one was uh, teal and purple and whitish, in case you missed it. Teal seems to be seems to have been a popular color. I'm not sure what. I guess maybe the 80s influence. I can't think of any. Well, maybe into the 90s, early 90s, mid 90s. Another bug splat just hit. More for me to wash off later. weird every now and then it'll see something that it thinks is an emergency and it, it will slow down quickly for some reason not frequently but every now and then I'm sure the guy beside me wondered what the heck I was doing Oh, wow. Yeah, um, for better or for worse, well, probably a lot for worse, there's a lot of stuff opening up in the U.S., especially in the southern parts of the U.S., uh, with Arizona being included, where it's, it really doesn't make a lot of sense. But they're not going to learn. You can't teach them, so... I was actually shocked in uh, Culver's, which is the restaurant, like a fast food restaurant here. Um, I just went and enter air. Mm, blah, 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 blah. I just went in there to use the restroom while, when I first plugged in and started charging there, and two thirds of the guests were not wearing masks. Probably more like three quarters, actually. Um, thankfully, all the staff were wearing masks but hardly any of the patrons were. And there was a whole bunch of people in there. So I, yeah, I went straight to the restroom, did my thing, washed my hands and left. I, I'm not messing around with that stuff. You do have to remember too, this area, Casa Grande and Phoenix, that's where they were, you know, ra uh, rioting outside of the election tally offices, telling them to stop the vote. It, the, 
the vote stop. They just have to count them. I mean, anyway. Oh, they were saying stop the count. Yeah, anyway. Hey, people completely disconnected with the realities of election process. I think this guy's about at least 10, if not 20 miles an hour over the speed limit that he's supposed to be going with the U-Haul trailer. Oh, and it looks like I don't have any signal. There's a four-wheeler going to cut off this tractor-trailer. Yep. And going to cut off this guy. Perfect. Nailed it. The silly thing is, I don't think the guy with the U-Haul is even the one going the slowest. not to be going that fast. Don't look, Red Jack. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they're just going out in the provincial parks and stuff and having parties then. Man, assholes everywhere. Must be buffering really well, not dropped in 10 minutes. Wow, that is impressive. Yay, I'm out of the clog again. Yeah, so here's Picacho Peak RV Resort. Um, they don't advertise it much, but it's a 55 and older park. We stayed there once, not knowing, and uh, they let us in. We had reservations for like a month out. But as backwards as this sounds, you can't get mail delivered there. Or even packages, I don't think, now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, FedEx and UPS don't deliver there either. Dude. Um, and the internet speed was horrible. Our Verizon link, we were only getting about 10 or 12 megabit down. And then they wanted to sell access to their WISP, uh, WISP being a wireless internet service provider. And it was like a hundred bucks a month, 10 megabit down. Like, no, we, we stayed there a week or less and then went back into uh, Phoenix area at, uh, oh, what is the name of that park up in McDowell, Fort McDowell, Fort McDowell RV Resort. So we ended up staying up there and it was a lot better. At the time you could get packages there. This park, it's not that 
specifically the park doesn't allow package delivery or anything it's just the mail doesn't run there you have to go to the mail the post office to pick up any mail you had delivered So it was that trip, actually. We searched all over Casa Grande to see if there was anything else that would work for us. And there's plenty of RV parks around Casa Grande, but uh, none that would have fit us. <laughs> uh, that That's uh, interesting. I'm not sure why my speed showed a zero when I passed the U-Haul. Um, I can tell you the maximum speed I hit included two zeros, though, if that helps. <laughs> yeah, Dennis, sort of like Rusty's, although eh, Rusty's at least has a relatively valid excuse. Like the, the population density doesn't really warrant door-to-door -door mail service, and you wouldn't be able to get to everybody in the same day anyway. Um, this is like there's, I, I don't know, there's plenty of people around there I don't I just don't see why although I as much as it almost makes sense at Rusty's I still don't necessarily like that <laughs> I feel like the mail service is a, a governmental service that should be available to everyone without having to need a to own a vehicle to be able to go pick up your mail it just doesn't sit quite right with me They'd need like 40 mail carriers, and every one of them would only have like three stops if there were actual postal routes in the rodeo area. The only downside to live streaming my drives is I can't listen to music because it'll get flagged on YouTube and get this channel taken down. So that is unfortunate, but yes, absolutely, Dennis. Definitely thankful that UPS and FedEx still deliver out there. Very, very thankful. Which meant Amazon was still a valid option, is still a valid option at Rusty's. Now oh, that guy had some place to be. As does this guy. Earbuds, yeah, I know, I know. I could use earbuds. Um, but then I'm kind of disconnected. I don't know. Earbuds are too disconnecting from the outside world. Um, as strange as it sounds, I like to listen to music. I like to listen to it loud, but I still like to be able to hear some outside events if, if needed. There's a locomotive just getting on his roll coming out of Tucson. Wait, are we coming out of Tucson or coming into Tucson? I guess we're coming out of Tucson now. Crazy. I drove past the astronomy stores and didn't stop. Yeah, part of me wishes uh, there were a few around here. 
course, I don't really want to wish anything bad on anyone else. So. Okay, I'm going into Tucson. All right. I thought, man, that the time really had flown by if I was already past Tucson. All right. Ah. It's hard to tell on the little map over on my on the side of the thing, and because I'm using the most of the screen for chat, it's hard to tell there too. Let's see, it's Saturday, so the astronomy shops are open right now. I don't think I have clearance to go astronomy shopping. But you know what, Dennis, if you needed something, if, if you needed something astronomy related, I'm not sure how I could say no to an astronomer in need. I, I might have to stop at an astronomy shop. like signal may be uh, going out on the T-Mobile side, but it looks like AT&T is holding strong, so we're still online. That's one way to move. Got a boat, fill it up. Oh man, that's too bad, Dennis. I actually have a Star Zona filter drawer. <laughs> uh, it's in a, like I have the full drawer and, and assembly for my Hyperstar. So it's not something I could have gotten rid of, but I have one. That doesn't look like fun. Oh, flat tire. Changing. I've done that a time or two on the side of the road. Once even with uh, the motor coach, uh, the tire on the trailer, the car hauler with the Model S. Is it the Model S? Yeah, the Model S in it at the time. Uh, Model S tire blew out. Or not the Model S tire. The trailer for the Model S tire on the trailer blew out. Luckily, it wasn't on an interstate like this. It was um, a back road coming up out of New Mexico, coming from Rio Doso area up toward um, uh, Colorado Springs is where we were heading. Hey, uh, the washing machine stopped at home. I have uh, automations for both our washer and dryer that send notices whenever they stop so that when we're doing laundry we don't forget and have soggy moldy not moldy but you know sour smelling clothes coming out of the washing machine a day later I will say uh, Phil if you're still on 
um, the most recent update to Home Assistant that came down just the other day, 20, 2021 4.5. Uh, I had all sorts of issues with it. It was not staying connected. It was uh, timing out after like three minutes and then all of a sudden the UI would respond again. Um, all my automations would pause while it was hung. So this morning I actually reverted it back to uh, 2021 4.4, which had been rock solid for me and still seems to be working well. Literally, that reversion occurred while I was sitting at the first supercharger outside Carl's Jr. in Kingman. And that downgrade is what fixed the Tesla data coming into this feed. That's what I need to do. Maybe tonight, if everything goes well, before I go to bed, I'll look up the... Uh, the Python API that Home Assistant uses for querying the Tesla data and see if the Python API supports location stream and then I can have more real-time data out of the X compared to what we're getting right now every few minutes. So Dennis says he has one on his Hyperstar. He bought a drawer to use. Oh, a ZWO drawer. Um, on his 65 millimeter quad OTA should be here Monday. Now if he can get a used ZWOAG to put on the telescope. Huh, well, a used ZWOAG you say? I might know of someone who may be having one spare literally in a few hours. Phil, okay, 202144, good. That's the stable one, don't go to five. Um, I'll be looking at the release notes for six for dot six to see if they've addressed it. When I looked in my logs, there were a bunch of hung um, async IO requests that were stuck and evidently it just got backed up and had to wait for some of them to die off before it could fire more. I wonder that was odd. Why are you slowing down? Yeah, that's odd. Just random. Oh, oh well, no idea. There are times when the Tesla sees ahead of the vehicle ahead of you. Uh, it can actually use the radar reflections under the car ahead of you to see what's going on in front of it. So there are times where, and there's videos on YouTube that show this, the next car ahead slams on his brakes and the Tesla slows down before the guy between the two of them even touches the brakes. Uh, and the guy in between them ends up hitting the guy. So you got to be careful overriding your Tesla braking out of nowhere. That's a government vehicle. At least it has government plates. Oh, 
Oh, Arizona state government. Oh, no. It's not government plates. It's an Arizona veteran. That guy had places to be. Well, John, I mean, it's relaxing. There Usually it's after you've driven for a long period of time, and so it makes sense to get out and stretch your legs, grab a bite, use the restroom. Doesn't really, uh, doesn't really bother me that much. Phil has to keep reloading TP-Link integration to access the entities. All of his Tuya stuff works perfectly. And they're not flashed. Yeah. Um, I would flash your Tuya devices if you can, just as a, an aside. Uh, but, yeah, TP-Link is really being hostile toward local controls, unfortunately. In 20 to 50 years, everyone will need to be electric. <laughs> I think it's going to be sooner than that, buddy. Uh, at least in some some countries um, but again you know the infrastructure the charging technology the battery technology the range all that is going to improve uh, just in the time that Tesla has been selling Model S vehicles their first Model S units had like 140 150 miles of range and now you can buy one with over 500 miles of range so yeah uh, you know, do you need, I, I don't know, hey, everybody's different, of course, but um, I really do welcome the, the intermittent breaks to get out and stretch my legs and, you know, use the restroom, grab a bite, whatever. Oh, speed limit changed. Phil, what do I think about local Tuya instead of flashing? Um, to be honest, I haven't looked into local Tuya. Um, my primary issue with those is more or less where the where the firmware comes from. Um, if you can do lo local Tuya, which again I haven't looked into, if you can do that and block their internet access 100%, then yeah, I'd be fine with that. 
Uh, I just haven't played with local Tuya control to know what what it can do and what its limitations are. I only have one, no, I have two Tuya devices. One of them is a four port um, surge protector. Well, not a surge protector, but a power strip. And you can control each socket individually. And it also has a four port USB charger that you can turn on and off. Um, that one's flashed with Tasmoda. And then the other two U device I have was not suscept was not a, uh, able to be flashed. They would modified the firmware and the Tasmoda folks hadn't caught up with it yet. Something I need to look back into, but um, it's on the park Wi-Fi there at the RV resort in our um, uh, site marker light. So I'm not as worried about it from my personal perspective, and I still control it through the Tuya cloud that way. Yeah, this is why I was concerned that I'd already gone through Tucson because I knew Tucson usually has some congestion and random stuff going on. So I was a little surprised if I'd already gone through it. So Phil has his IoT stuff in its own VLAN, um, but it creates its own problems. Yes, it does. I too have my own my own IoT VLAN. Um, I've got pretty much everything working well now. Uh, the Google Chromecast, Google Home devices was kind of a pain, uh, but that's working now. Had to add a few more firewall rules on that. Uh, trying to think. I don't think there's anything else that's really been problematic. Yeah, everything else is working well on it now. But it, it did take a good deal of uh, noodling through some issues to get it working right. I now feel like I'm going too fast. If I remember right, there also seems to be a lot of, historically, a lot of construction through Tucson, but there was a little bit back there, but it seems like not as much as normal.
looks like data is dropping in and out now. slower pace. I think I'm going to fill my water bottle back up. Dennis, no, I've not made it there. Oh, shit. sorry, I should have warned you before I did that. Um, no, I've not made it to the, there. Uh, that sounds intriguing. If I had more time on this trip, I would certainly partake of such a place. of uh, people not driving well over here. There we go. I think that's a casino, Caracal. Um, oh no, evidently it's a store of some sort. An electronic store. At that. Yes, indeed. Welcome to Tucson. This lane ends in less than a mile now, so either these guys need to speed up or I'm going to be stuck behind a U-Haul. Oh, they're moving up ahead. Yay. It worked out. can't remember where it was, but there was, it may have been in North Carolina. There was some place where that, I think it is in North Carolina. The left lane is just trucking along, no signs. There is a sign for a left exit, but the left exit sign doesn't tell you that the left lane has to exit. And then all of a sudden, there you are, right up in it, and not able to get out unless there's an opening. I know we've gone through that area a couple of times and either us getting bitten by it or someone else getting bitten by it and cutting us off um, because it wasn't well marked. If I remember right, it was coming down around the Winston-Salem area. By the way, Tucson, for those that aren't familiar, is where um, a lot of the baseball um, 
summer camps or spring spring training is uh, and recruiting and stuff like that happens down here. I'm not a big baseball fan, but I just saw the uh, baseball diamonds kind of all over the place, and it reminded me. There's a camping world. I don't think I've ever, I can't think of a time that I've been to that camping world. I generally try to avoid camping world. They have some kitschy products from time to time, but usually you can scope them out there and get them way less expensive someplace else. Oh, yeah, the gem show. Man, oh, man. Tons and tons and tons of rocks come through here. Another big thing Tucson is known for. So astronomy, baseball, gem show. And our beers. Popo staked out over there. Brian, Tasmoda versus Home Assistant. Um, well, so from my perspective, they're complementary. Uh, Tasmoda lets you take over control of a lot of ESP8266 and ESP32 devices. I think they'll do it ESP32 as well. Anyway, so Tasmoda lets you take those over and run them with MQTT, which then makes them really easy to to run with Home Assistant and even supports discovery Home Assistant's discovery protocol unless you're having to run a really stripped down Tasmoda. So uh, I would say they're complementary, um, and I like them both. I also use ESP Home uh, only in one or two places though because I, I just haven't gotten into the whole ESP. I mean, I've written code for ESP but I haven't gotten into the ESP Home simple coding side of things. Oh, okay, now I'm definitely coming on the outskirts of Tucson because this is where the uh, supercharger is. Uh, it's at this Pilot Flying J over here. Not the one I'm going to, I'm going on further to Wilcox. So, got 141 miles left in the tank and 72 miles to my charger stop. So, plenty of range left. But I have, John mentioned taking a nap, I have slept at this supercharger, uh, both on the way to and on the way back from uh, repairing the Astro Shed last time I had to make this run as an impromptu, unplanned run. Now, Brian, if you want to talk about Home Assistant versus Dometics, Dometics, Dometics versus OpenHab, I'll go Home Assistant all day, every day. Um, 
Home Assistant's written in Python, which I personally prefer way above and beyond Java. And I think, if I remember right, I can't remember if it's Dometis or, jo or OpenHab that's Java, and then I think the other one is written in C. Um, so the one written in C would have some performance advantage, but there's so much processing overhead available, even on a Raspberry Pi, that it's not likely to be a, a serious issue one way or the other. Um, but the openness of Python and the community and all the, the people that submit code and fixes and tweaks and tests and all that stuff, just from everything I've seen, Home Assistant is, blows the other two out of the water. I also tried Home Seer, which is written in, uh, well, it's written for Microsoft.net. Whatever language they use is probably like C Sharp or something. Um, and it works well enough, but it's not a UI system. It's not meant to be looked at. It's meant to be write all your automations and then leave it alone. Uh, Home Assistant can do that, but Home Assistant also it can be make a really elegant UI for controlling your smart home from a smart device or a tablet or something. Um, so, yeah, Home Seer is way far behind in the UI department. Way, way far behind. Even in their newest one that was released. And I paid for two copies of Home Seer uh, with upgrades to the latest version. And I even installed the latest version and then I got rid of it. Actually, I need to sell those licenses. Have I watched Dave Plummer's videos? Uh, yes, he's the uh, former Microsoft coder that retired. Uh, Dave's Garage or Dave's Basement or something like that is his YouTube channel. Uh, yeah, I, I enjoy his stuff. Um, he's it, it's <laughs> it's not for everyone, right? You have to be interested in the topic he's talking about because it is not, for most people, sexy, entertaining, you know, grab your attention type stuff. But yeah, I, I do dig it a lot. Oh, wow. It's back up to 75 now. I should have known that. Let's get on down the road. I had a, a good chuckle watching Dave's video on uh, the smallest Windows, functioning Windows program you could write in assembly. And uh, he, he mentioned one of the other people I listen to all the time, which is Steve Gibson. And he said something about, I think even Steve Gibson would appreciate the challenge or, or wouldn't be able to make a smaller bit of code or something like, like that. And so on the, podcast Steve does uh, called Security Now on This Week in Tech, um, twit.tv if you're going to look for it. Anyway, Security Now podcast, Steve Gibson. Steve mentioned it. He's like, I, I, you know, I don't know him personally, but he, he mentioned me in his show and I had a lot of people, he said, uh, you know, lots of listeners pinged me on Twitter to let me know that he'd mentioned me. So he said, I went and watched it. He said he did a good job. He did a really good job. But he said, I could have made it smaller. There's some optimizations that can be done in this conditional check that he did or something. Uh, I don't I don't code assembly. I'm not I'm a geek, but I am not that level. I I was I came into technology late enough that higher level languages and by higher level I mean like C, C plus uh, plus, were already on the scene and, and well accepted. So that's that's where I started cutting my teeth uh, after basic, of course. But um, so I never got into assembly, but it it was yeah, it's good stuff. I, I like Dave's Dave shtick. Whole line of cars behind me. Was the QR code video? Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I must admit, I didn't 
see what his program actually did. I remember seeing that it had uh, menus and stuff and a help about page or whatever. For some reason, oh, I was watching it while I was doing other stuff. So I wasn't 100% committed, which Lenin gets on to me about when we're watching shows and I'm doing other stuff at the same time. Hey, Chris. Good to hear from you. Uh, I'm actually only going to be there tonight. Uh, my plan is to leave tomorrow morning. So tonight I'm going to be installing my on-axis guider and doing some other general stuff around the shed. Uh, looks like it's going to be clear enough early tonight that I'll be able to get the on-axis guider in focus. And then uh, if it's super clear, hell, I'll run an imaging session. But aside from that, I'm going to catch some sleep and uh, then head out tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning I'm heading out and going to Star or Sun Arizona, Arizona, which is where I think you met Mark uh, Mark Williams there at Rusty's. He was the one that was behind us when we first came in there and he'd had his scope blown over and ruined one of his mounts and all kinds of stuff. Anyway, he's the guy on the other side of the mountains. I'm going to go help him automate his shed. Uh, if you're around, feel free to swing by. I uh, love to chit chat with you while I'm uh, working on the shed. Cool. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I should, let's see here. So I've got 54 minutes to my charge stop, which will put me in there at 3, which will be 4, Rusty's time. Probably going to take 45 minutes or to an hour, account for an hour there, and then uh, another 80 minutes to drive. Uh, so, yeah, I should, I should be at Rusty's around 6-ish, but I'll, I'll ping you and let you know. favorite was one about Windows Bob app. <laughs> yeah, um, I remember Bob. Uh, actually, I remember it a lot. Um, it was horrible. But uh, I'm trying to remember. I think I did watch his video on that. Uh, I'm trying to think of what the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely watched his video on that. Um yeah, Bob was horrible. And if I remember right, Bob was the underpinnings of the interface on the Tandy Sensation that Radio Shack sold. And I had a Tandy Sensation and I ripped that thing, I ripped that out of there, the Bob stuff, uh, and their Sensation interface. Tasmoda versus ESP Home. Okay. Um, whichever suits the job, whichever fits the bill for what you're trying to accomplish. Um, I think ultimately ESP Home has more flexibility just in the way that you, you create YAML that configures it, but that configuration actually changes the compiled options. So you can really get exactly the functions you want into code without having the rest of it along for the ride. And so you can also make it more specialized in how you, um, you know, like if you want this bit, this bit, and this bit, because you're only picking those three, you don't have to worry about as much of memory constraints as if in order to get this bit over here, you needed all this, which is something that Tasmoda has, unless you're, unless you're compiling your own, and then it probably doesn't matter either way. Um, but I have both in use. Uh, one, the ESP Home thing that I have running is a uh, device from Circuit Setup, is the name of the company, and it's their home energy monitor stuff. It's um, it's a stackable ESP32 board. Yeah, stackable ESP32 board, 
and each stack layer will run up to six uh, current transformer coils so you can monitor power usage in your home technically uh, my home just happens to be an RV so that's that's where my ESP home is deployed and then the Tasmoda stuff I have are stuff like um, Shelly plugs and what else oh not Shelly plugs Sonoff plugs uh, a couple of Sonoff S31s and a Sonoff four channel pro relay board that I have flashed with Tasmoda and then I also put Tasmoda on my two-year power strip I was talking about earlier. So, and Chris says, have some decent skies tonight after 11 when the moon sets. Yeah, um, and I I likely will try to get something run tonight if I can put together a capture plan. Um, I'm still trying to get uh, NGC. I'm really gonna screw this up something like uh, 30 ah crap I can't remember um, anyway there, there's an NGC target that has a, a lenticular galaxy and then it has a couple of galaxies below look like they're so they're really twisted and warped I can't for the life of me remember what the uh, ID for it is and it doesn't have a catchy name that I'm recalling either but I have a capture plan set up for that so maybe I can run that tonight uh, I've been dying to get data on it, but my guide setup has been so horrible that I just, it, it was frustration. Uh, used Bob for a dead block of memory to tell the difference between retail and include. <laughs> nice. Man, I did not remember Bob on Windows 95. I, the Bob I'm thinking of, or the interface I'm thinking of, was on Windows 3.1. Uh, maybe it wasn't Bob that I'm thinking of, or maybe it just it was something that was dead and stuck around for a while into 95 age. NGC is like 3781 or something, maybe. I don't I don't know. It's in anyway. I don't know. I I can tell you once I get stationary. which will be in about 50-ish minutes, depending on traffic. Oh, bandwidth issues. Dead block of memory. Hmm. What, so Phil, what am I completely off base? Was Phil that, or was Bob that UI that it looked like a, like your den, your office den? You had your Rolodex that you, I don't know, your spreadsheet or something. I don't, I don't remember exactly, but it was laid out like an office den. Chris, yeah, trying to go for 2021 version of Rosette, yeah. Nice. Yeah, the Rosette's a really nice target. I have not shot that one before. Um, I fear it's too late in the season for me to start on that one, but maybe. Okay. He hid it in the retail versions of Windows 95. Oh, okay, okay. That, that makes sense. <laughs> Man, for a minute I was trying to dust off more cobwebs and figure out what the heck I was remembering. Well, this isn't going to work out so well. Can't remember now if I made it go over there or if it was going over there itself. Ah, who knows? Okay, cool. Re really glad I, I wasn't uh, way far off base.
Yeah, uh, Chris, I, I think Rosette's too far gone for me to try starting on it this year. Uh, I'll hold off till next year on it. NGC 3781 really rings a bell for me. Maybe that's right on the lenticular thing I was looking at. It's really cool looking galaxy. Really cool. Big S shape. Ninety percent done outside. Yep, yep, going roll. Uh, I am uh, about forty-five minutes out from my last charge stop before I roll on into rodeo. Then it's only it's eighty miles from there into rodeo. So uh, doing well. Glad to hear you're almost ready. No, don't do that. It was trying to change lanes to the right again. Hmm. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'm wrong on that one then. Uh, I saw somebody post it on Facebook, and I was like, oh, wow, that's a really cool-looking galaxy. I, I should shoot that. Um, that's where I've gotten, like, my last three or four target suggestions. Um, man, that's going to eat at me. I, if you're on still in about uh, 45 minutes, I'll tell you what it is. Um, man, yeah, that's going to bug me. Oh, cool. Yeah, the Tempest is an easy takedown. I think, oh, you got to go up high on yours, though, because you strapped it up way high on that uh, telephone pole thing. So, uh, yeah, you'll need your ladder for that one or a step stool anyway, right? Man, oh man, we got one guy clogging up the works. <laughs> yes, the thing you need is always already put away. That's that's pretty much the way of it, David. Clearly, the guy that's clogging up the works isn't using cruise control. I may go a little in excess of the speed limit here. All right, Chris, enjoy your nap. Oh, no, he's going on with it now. It was on Facebook. It was in um, one of the astrophotographer groups. Unfortunately, it's about three or four weeks ago, so I'm not sure exactly where I, to tell you to go find it. Uh, David, my ETA at Rusty's, um, likely 6 p.m. ish Rusty's time, maybe 5. Ah, crap, now I gotta do the math again. Uh, let's see, 
I'll be getting into the charger at two, which is three Rusty's time. So I'll be leaving probably around four Rusty's time and it's 80 miles. So it'll take me just over an hour to get there. So around five Rusty's time is my expected arrival, which is actually pretty much spot on to what I had planned um, when I was putting my thoughts together on this trip. So right about five Rusty's time, in theory, which is mountain time, by the way, mountain daylight time. So it'll be six year time, David, six year time, David. <laughs> oh, really? After 99.5, it goes to zero. Interesting. And that guy went to zero too. I don't know if you saw that on the side of the road. Anyway. Um, huh, 99.4 goes to zero. I bet that it's actually a, a hundred being reported. Um, 3310, that does sound right. So Chris, if it, if it is 3310, it's an S-shaped galaxy, then there's some interacting galaxies that look like they're being gravitationally lensed. Uh, at the top or bottom, depending on your orientation. Then there's another something off to the side, another galaxy or something. 3310 does sound right. So, Phil, yeah, I'm betting it's 100 miles. It's 100, but it's the conversion uh, inaccuracy in my formula that makes it 99.4 with the rounding error. And then I don't know, though, why it wouldn't report above that. <laughs> but just interesting. Yeah, John, they are definitely searching for a police officer. Uh, they they definitely have an emergency that they, they need help with, I'm certain. Um, I'm glad they did not find the officer for their emergency while I was passing a bunch of cars. Actually, passing two cars. I'm going to look it up, Chris, just to be sure. I'm going to have Google find it for me. Uh, nope, nope, it's not NGC 3310. Um, nope, not 3628. Nope, not 4565. Not 1646. Dang, sorry. No, I don't. Uh, I don't know what it is. I'll have to look it up when I get stopped up here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Questions. Uh, on their way to a scene of an accident. Yes, almost certainly, Phil. <laughs> um, so uh, John asks, who pays the electricity for the charging stations? Um, Tesla, directly. But then uh, if you're not grandfathered in on unlimited supercharging, then the Tesla owner that is charging pays the low, whatever the utility rate is that Tesla pays for that electricity. Uh, and it's actually even better than that because they Tesla charges you what the car reports that it charged into the batteries. So you actually gain for free all the charging inefficiencies. Get you get those for free. Uh, Chris, no, can't send a picture on the chat. Um, I looked up thirty three ten in my on my phone, and that was not did not look like it, at least not in the pictures that I saw. Um, that's really bugging me though. Uh, I actually have, 
<laughs> I have the the capture plan saved as NGC and whatever the ID is, and then I wrote lenticular beside it because I wanted to be able to remember to come back to it. Um, I'm pretty. I, I'm like ninety percent certain it's. It starts with a three. That only leaves you nine hundred ninety nine options, I guess. I thought I would have been able to find it in search history for my phone, but uh, oh, I know where I can find. Let me get through um, Benson here, and uh, I ha I sent it in chat. Uh, I use Signal, um, so I sent it in Signal to Mark, so I know I can find it in that. And Chris, yes, I do have full self driving, and it 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 is driving right now. Um, Benson though has some sweeps and curves and stuff and I just like to be a little more attentive. I, it, it won't take but a second to find it in signal. So thirty seven eighteen. NGC 3718. Thought I said that earlier. Yes. Uh, trying to find a representative picture. Ah! Anyway, 3718 is it, Chris. Uh, you'll, yeah, there's a couple different shots of it and the dip, some, the different shots make it look really completely wildly different. By the way, this is Benton, oh, Arizona, which has a uh, Butterfield RV resort and they have a 16 inch Mead, uh, Schmidt Cassegrain telescope on a fork mount in an observatory. And they do nightly tours of the night sky. That's one of the work camper positions there at that park. Dude, you should not. I don't know why people with U-Hauls feel like they need to be doing 100 miles an hour. I know, I know. I'm coming back. Cool. Glad you found it, Chris. Um, yeah, it, it's a cool looking galaxy set. And it fits frames really well um, with it, the two twisted galaxies and then the the extra one on the side sorry so the honking and acceleration was because there was a and he's behind me now, an SUV towing a small U-Haul trailer, and that trailer is just all kinds of wobbly all over the road. Um, I didn't feel like that should be beside me, especially with him drifting as well, so. Uh, Chris, what focal length am I shooting at? Uh, whatever the CDK 12 and a half is, I think it's, 2541 millimeter and then I'm shooting it with that uh, ASI 1600 Pro Thank you. 
and it's high enough in the sky right now too, Chris, that uh, you should be able to get a lot of some good time on it before it's uh, setting too early. If you were wanting to shoot it, but don't don't shoot it. You'll you'll show me up. I don't <laughs> don't 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 shoot it. For those on the chat that aren't familiar with Chris, he is a really great astrophotographer. Uh, and he really knows PixInsight and uh, has done some impromptu courses and maybe even some uh, official courses on it on uh, PixInsight processing of astrophotography. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was joking with Chris, Chris uh, not to shoot it because he'll show, show me up on mine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it would be just a little tiny speck on uh, 420 millimeter, and probably, yeah, the 1200 even would. It it would be a a centroid. Oh, I appreciate that. Maybe center 30 percent on the 1200, if I were guessing. Depends on your camera, of course. Uh, so, truck just pulled out while I was coming up on it pretty quick. And I'm actually not upset by it for two reasons. One, he's a truck and he needs to maintain his momentum. I'm familiar with that with the big coach. Two, there was a cop in the middle. Not that I would have necessarily been fast enough to have gotten pulled over because of it, but it was marginal, so I, I appreciate his uh, assistance. And now we're going to give it the beans. So Chris, is the 420 millimeter the one you just did all the collimation and uh, or cleaning and collimation on? Looks like bandwidth issues now. Oh well. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Two thousand plus it's it's a pretty splendid shot. Ah, uh, yeah. Just catching the chats up on the stream here. So yeah, that uh, 420 millimeter is the one he just cleaned and collimated. I, Chris, I'm a, I'm worried. I think I need to check collimation on my CDK tonight. So I'm hoping. I'm hoping it's not cloudy while the moon is still up so I can take the time to do the collimation after I take the time to focus the guide scope or guide camera before it, the moon sets so I can shoot targets. Did I put enough steps in there? 
I've also got other stuff I need to do around the shed too, though. I, I'm swapping out my outside cameras uh, with ones that have inbuilt uh, person and vehicle detection so that my notices will be more informative. Um, it's really entertaining to watch people try to figure out what that shed is. Really entertaining. <laughs> I saw one husband and wife couple that were arguing with them, each other. The husband first thought the telescope rolled out on, on the rails. Not quite. And then he said, oh no, the roof rolls out on the rails. The whole roof comes off, which is correct. And his wife... <laughs> She said, no, try again. Nice try, but that's not what this does. No way. Try again. I'm just, I'm laughing my ass off watching them. Because uh, he was spot on. He, he was right. And then they said they'd ask uh, Bob, who is uh, electrician slash maintenance slash all around helper there at the park. Uh, so they were going to go ask Bob what it was and how it worked. I didn't catch him coming back to find out if they, you know, figured out he was correct or if they left or whatever, but, uh, so Chris, um, <laughs> mm, I don't have a laser. Uh, generally I don't think SCT and CDKs use laser, um, for collimation. I do have the collimation spacer and stuff that came from plane wave, which I should have read up on more before the trip. So I may be doing some reading before I start trying to collimate. Um, my experience is collimating my eight inch SCT, which is basically just pointed at a bright star, defocus, and then make the, the defocused donut equal all the way around uh, and as you tweak it you have to keep re slewing so that you keep the star in the center um, so that's my experience the, but the plane wave does come with a collimation spacer man I don't know if I want to go through that tonight if that if I have to use that we'll see I I don't know exactly now that you've brought that up if I have the patience to do that tonight. We shall see. I know the whole laser uh, Cheshire thing is really big in the um, uh, Dobsonian space. Oh, that's not good. I hate to do this, buddy. Sorry. And thanks. I do appreciate it. I come up on all this before I assessed what was going on specifically, so I hate doing that, coming in between a bunch of trucks that are on a long climb like that but anyway um, uh oh Chris buddy I'm eating into your nap time you keep looking stuff up <laughs> I appreciate it though uh, I think I can just point it at a bright star with the adapter thingy that they send and something like I can't remember if it's an eyepiece, if I remember right. It's a spacer, and you put it on. Shit, I don't have any eyepieces with me. Uh, may need to bum an eyepiece. Yes, in the Newtonian space. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the lasers are a big, big thing in the Newtonian space. You got some place to be, evidently. Yeah, 
Yeah, I don't know why I've not jumped onto the nuke bandwagon. I haven't had a nuke before. Um, I've helped people with newts. Newtonians, sorry, not new, the lizards, Newtonian telescopes. That penis, yeah, eyepieces. <laughs> I'm there with you, buddy. I haven't seen one in a long time. Correction, I haven't looked through one in a long time. I saw my collection of them while I was gathering up stuff for this trip. Did not even consider packing one. <laughs> um if you, Dylan O'Donnell, he's a, a Australian astrophotographer, really funny uh, skit where he compares visual astronomers to astrophotographers. <laughs> he talks a lot about eyepieces in that piece, in that uh, video. It is hilarious. And it's spot on too, like absolutely spot on. Visual astronomers, oh man, they worship those eyepieces. He did a jab at the end of one of his most recent videos to visual astronomers. He was talking about some pictures he'd taken or something he looked at, and maybe it was the color, like uh, doing something with the color. Uh, anyway, so toward the end of his video, he said, yeah, you know, in, at the end of the day, these are just way better than looking at anything visually. And visual astronomers, if you find something that looks anywhere near as impressive as this does, take a picture of it and send it to me to prove it. <laughs> So I, I had a good chuckle out of that. Fourteen miles should be about uh, 10, 11 minutes to the supercharger stop up here. And uh, I too will be pulling up the collimation instructions for my plane wave telescope. I would completely forgotten about that special spacer and uh, whatever else there is to it for the CDK. Okay, all defocus star adjustments have to install the spacer to do it. That's weird. I wonder why you have to install the spacer. Does the, Is the spacer just to hold an eyepiece? Or does the spacer have an eyepiece? <laughs> okay, great. Uh, so Dennis has uh, eyepieces he can loan out because uh, he evidently right now knows where they are. So uh, laser collimator. I, yeah, I don't think I don't think I need a laser. Okay, Chris, I need a couple of eyepieces. Uh, does it say like what uh, focus range or what millimeter range eyepieces I need? I really appreciate the help, by the way. <laughs> it, it's it's going to save me a boatload of time when I get there. I still feel bad I'm robbing you of your nap time, though, Chris. Oh, I wonder if the spacer, I wonder if they want you to get rid of the focuser so that you don't have any risk of flexure in the optical train. So yeah, it is to hold the eyepiece. Okay. Yeah, I, I bet that's it. I bet they don't want any risk of flexure in the optical train while you're doing it. Because that would, depending on which side of the pier you're flipped on, that would change, if it flexed both ways, the adjustment that you were doing. And no matter which side you went to, it'd be wrong. So I wonder if that's what the, the special piece is. Won't work with laser, 24 millimeter and a five millimeter. Whew. So uh, Dennis, 
Do you have a 24 and a 5 ballpark? Anything close? Maybe Chris, maybe you do. There may be some other visual astronomers there in the park too. Maybe I can bum, bum one off of them. Or maybe John has one. Uh, I'm not sure how close his setup is nowadays. I know he was building it, getting his uh, house put in place and everything. Oh, Telview 24 and a 5. Man, that's, that's damn close. I will take that in a pinch. I, yeah, Chris, I don't, I don't think it's far off. Hey, here's okay. I gotta tell you a little story, Chris. It's gonna eat into your nap time some more. Dennis already knows the story because he helped recover from it. I may have told you about it. No, nah, I don't think I did, Chris. Um, okay, so trying out new software Voyager to do automating the entire shed and with the goal to build up confidence in it and do multi-night automation with zero contact so basically I just feed it a stack of target sequences and it just runs multiple nights in a row how whatever it takes accounting for cloudiness and brightness of whatever and elevation and all that stuff um, and so I was trying this new software and messing with it. And I'm going to end up buying it. It's Voyager, by the way, if I didn't say that already. Um, well, one of the things, because I have a rotator, I have a Nightcrawler rotator. And in the ASCOM driver, it has plus or minus slew limits or rotation limits. So I have it set to plus or minus 190. So I got 20 degree overlap and then, you know, the rest of it. Um the problem is that slew limit in the ASCOM driver is not an absolute limit. It is a relative limit to the synced rotational position of the rotator. And Nightcrawler's, the rotation direction needs to be reversed in order for it to work properly. Otherwise, you keep hunting past, like well past and, it, or, and or in the wrong direction of the rotation angle you're actually looking for. So, all that said, I also have USB and power cable going to the tail end of the imaging camera. And then I have the filter wheel and the off-axis guider and this USB cable that kind of dangles out there. So in Voyager, I did not realize it does not honor the ASCOM setting for reversing the direction of the focuser. It has its own setting. So I set it off to do a collection, an imaging run, with a specific rotation angle I wanted, and it kept missing it. And every time it would miss it, it would resync the, the new position to the rotator which then reset the rotation limits in the ASCOM driver. And uh, it ended up getting caught on the USB cable. And before I figured all that out, the, fo the rotator literally unscrewed the optical train adapters and my camera, filter wheel, off-axis guider, guide camera, and about uh 20-ish 25 millimeters of extension fell to the floor off of the back of the telescope i was absolutely sick to my stomach uh, not only that but when i was watching in the camera feed when dennis went out to check on it he picked up two pieces a piece in each hand so that didn't exactly instill me with confidence and we didn't have voice comms at that moment so i was a little bit of freaking out uh, turned out everything was fine electrically and looked fine mechanically, but I have an oddity now in that the guide camera, when it's even the slightest bit out of focus, shows commas. 
instead of donuts. I have a theory that the pickup prism got pushed too far up or down or something in the throat of the on-axis guider. So I suspect that's the issue and not actually collimation, but I have had that scope apart twice and not collimated it. So it probably could stand to be collimated anyway. Um, so that's where I'm at. And if you heard all of that, Chris, and you're not a little queasy to your stomach. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was beside myself. Literally it like, it just kept failing and not only failing in rotation, but each time it did it, it was out of focus again. And I was scratching my head, what the hell's going on? And I fired up my, one of my interior cameras in the shed to look at like right after it had just given up, like all the software just said, Nope, I can't do this. I don't know what's going on. It's, it's bad. It's wrong. So I fired up the camera and looked and all I saw was the open gaping hole in the back of my night crawler. And so then I fired and USB and power cable dangling. So then I fired up the other camera at the opposite end of the shed and I saw this black blob over in the corner in the floor. So yeah, I was, I was very much, uh, beside myself. Yeah. Very, very much. Ouch. So I've got pictures of that too. Cause I got it. Like, this is what it should look like. This is what it did look like. And that ain't right. But it did work electrically, put it all back together. I, I really think it's just the pickup tube. I hope, 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 hope. One mile. Rex Allen Drive. Then I turn left, then I turn right, then I turn into uh, Holiday Inn Express, and there's the superchargers. I hope they're not full up or something weird. Um, I only have 39 miles of range left. What's this one say? 48. Okay, so it's been a minute before since that's updated. <laughs> David, yes. Uh, if if you're just coming to this, you like tech stuff, you like RVing, have a passing semblance of interest in astronomy, you don't mind deep crazy talk. Yeah. No, Subscribe, no. thumbs up. <laughs> And let's see, it's only showing up in the guide scope. So here's the other thing. My eccentricity is a little out uh, on my imaging. I've noticed I've had to reject several subs due to eccentricity. So I that's my other uh, motivating factor for wanting to at least check collimation. Yeah, and uh, David and I get together quite frequently, uh, either on my channel, his channel, or both. So uh, if you like to see two geeks spin each other's propellers, uh, this is the place. Now turn right onto North Virginia Avenue. Oh, good. There's only one Tesla charging right now. And it's like a six or eight stall. I don't recall. I've been, looks like eight stall. Yay! In 500 feet, turn right onto Loop Circle Island, then turn right. Looks like a Model 3. Now turn right onto North Circle Island. Breaking the trend of all white Teslas, this Model 3 is, uh, now turn right. looks like silver or gray. I can't tell. I don't recall what the uh, options are. Silver. It is silver. Now your destination is on the right. Let me just get through this little water puddle. Look slow and we'll go.
I screwed that one up. I forgot which side the charge cable was on, so I lined up for the wrong side. Okay, I'll be right back. Evidently, this one is dead. I will go to the next one then. I looped the uh, charge handle up over the charger this time so somebody else doesn't do the same thing. Starting to charge. Yeah, yeah that's a good sign. <sighs> All right. So Chris said, okay, hang on. When you guys are looking at the stars with your telescopes, can you see where you came from? Well, yeah, we all came from Stardust. Uh, real information and do not make money. Yep. Chris, yes. Um, I, I agree with you. Uh, I just feel it's one of those things that I hadn't checked yet. So I was kind of thinking I should probably just double check and make sure. Oh, wow. Daughter ordered a model Y picking up next week. Awesome, man. Congratulations to her. Um, very cool. Hopefully you'll get to uh, take a ride in it when you go visit. And yep, yep, charging up now, getting spooling up, putting in uh, 110 kilowatts, 115, 116, 120. Where will it stop? Up to 138 kilowatt, 39. So it looks like I'm going to top out at 139 kilowatts for charge power. Uh, and that is 400 and, oh, hit, a, hit 140 kilowatts. 408 miles of range per hour of charge right now is the charge rate. Yay! Whew. Long drive day. Long, long drive day. Uh, Dennis, four millimeter, not five. Yeah, that should be fine. I, it's close. I'm trying to think if I have a five millimeter. I have something in that rain range. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think I do have a five. I, I don't have one with me, so it's moot anyway. All right, 
Now I'm going to just pull up the CDK docs. So for uh, <laughs> Google still thinks I'm in Hong Kong. Um, for those unfamiliar, collimation, uh, first let me explain the optical train. So light comes in through the front of the telescope. About here, actually, I can. Yeah, anyway, in through the front of the telescope, bounces off a big mirror in the back that that is curved so that it focuses the light up to a secondary mirror which is up at the very opening where the light came through so there's a smaller secondary mirror up there that secondary mirror reflects light back down through a hole in the primary mirror to your optical train to your uh or yeah your camera your filter wheel stuff like that um collimation is the act of tweaking the precise position of the secondary mirror so that it accurately puts light onto the primary. So that's, and if it's not collimated properly, you'll get strange oddities. Uh, things will be fuzzier than they should be. Oh, come on, dude, don't, don't charge on me. Is there a 2A, 2B? Hello. Hey, um, if you plug in on one, it doesn't share chargers with the rest of us. So if you notice, there's a... Yeah, I'm on 3A. So you're plugging in... Oh, you're plugging in on 4A. It might not work. Uh, I just tried 4B and it was dead, but I don't I don't know. You might get lucky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I lost track of my charger count. <laughs> yeah. If it works, I'll be kicking myself for not to have thought of that. Oh, man. <laughs> I would, I should have done that. I wouldn't have had to worry about anybody else coming in on me. I've called them. Yeah. But it actually shows in the, in the app that there's one stalled down. Exactly. Yeah, I agree with that. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> Were you just at the Casa Grande? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I recognize your dog. <laughs> okay. See if any. Okay, no more chats come in. Remove focus from black plane, back plane. Place the ronchi, ronchi, R O N C H I, ronchi. I'm going with ronchi. Uh, adapter in the back plane of the telescope. Replace the focuser retaining ring to hold the adapter in place. Okay. Cool. Oh, they have a ronchi. The ocular? Maybe mine has an ocular. 
for packaging purposes, blah, blah, blah. Oh, 1B. For the 12 and a half, it includes the adapter placed inside the barrel of the focuser and locked down using thumb screws. The spacer is then inserted into the adapter, secured with thumb screws. Finally, eyepiece. Oh, so evidently it comes with an eyepiece. Maybe. Uh, CDK uses a quarter 20 socket head cap screws for collimation. Requires a 3 16 Allen wrench. Yes. Yeah, usually a two person job. I get that. If necessary, you can try using a webcam and one and a quarter eye piece, nose piece, such as. Celestron next image and place of the eyepiece setup. You can watch the video. Yeah, well, yeah, I've got that. I mean, not that exact thing, but I've got an eyepiece based image, imaging camera. Primary secondary spacing instead of the factory, you typically not need to adjust this unless the secondary has been removed. Nope, secondary has not been removed. Okay, good. That Ronky eyepiece is pretty interesting. It helps. The Ronky eyepiece specifically is more for primary secondary spacing. But I shouldn't have to do anything with that. I've never moved the secondary. Am I boring everybody to tears? Everybody jump ship. Flee. <laughs> How many miles left to final destination? Okay, so Augusto, um, I have 80 miles left once I depart here. And Chris. Thank you. Appreciate uh, all the assistance. Uh, enjoy your nap, buddy. We'll see you later tonight, maybe. Hopefully. Uh... <laughs> you, you do have a lot of boxes, but it does seem it would be a fine item out of space. Uh, no, John. Uh, so it was included with the early ones, but... The newer ones that are just as expensive, you have to pay for it. It was an early owner perk uh, to make the acquisition of a Tesla a more appealing uh, due to its cost. So you not having to pay for electricity ever was a big selling point for early Tesla owners, especially those that traveled a lot. Okay, back to reading. Stimulating documentation with Michael Kidd. And focal plane change for every one millimeter second or spacing change. Holy crap. <laughs> okay. Nobody else is going to care about this, but that was, that's crazy. Move the secondary toward the primary loosen three screws. Loosen them in equal amounts to maintain collimation. Yeah, good luck. Uh, hold the secondary housing in one hand. Rotate. Okay. Yeah, I don't need to do that. Don't, don't, don't need to do that. Huh. 
Yeah, it's just... That's silly. I don't know why... I mean, I know why they need instructions for this, but it's the same... as I've done on an SCT. Point a bright star, defocus till it becomes a donut-like ring. Uh, if the donut hole appears well centered in the donut, proceed to step three. If the donut hole is not centered, adjust the culminating screws back to their center. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, that's exactly... Okay. It's collimation. I've done collimation. I know I'm no longer intrigued. Eighty point four miles, one hour and ten minutes, by the way. How many horsepower does my Tesla have? Um that is a good question. It is not something I had considered looking up. I've heard it said before, but I've not looked it up personally, and I don't recall. Let's see, Tesla Model X P 100D horsepower. Uh, 503 horsepower. Uh, wait a minute. That seems to be only one of the motors, and it's a two motor. Okay. I'm getting there. Oh, it's a P85D. That's not what I have. Closer. Okay. Powertrain. 605 horsepower rated, yeah, 605 rated horsepower, and then 713 pound-feet of torque. That's 967 newton meters of torque for non-Americas. So 967 newton meters of torque at 605 horsepower. <laughs> Phil, yeah, um, uh, I'm going to get some sleep tonight. Uh, once the imaging session kicks off, it's going to be running autonomously. Uh, as my wife says, probably won't sleep very well. That is accurate. Uh, is there a way to make my Google map in the corner larger? Yes. Um, oh, I have it out the rear right now. So I could make it larger vertically. I could also zoom in. Uh, maybe the zoom in is the better of those options. I'm, I'm guessing you're wanting just to see more detail about where I am. Uh, I, oh, Kevin, uh, instead of me tweaking that, if you go to turtleherding.com and click on the blog post about this trip, which is the first blog post, there's a map down at the very bottom that's interactable, interacting. So you can zoom in, pan around, zoom out, and if you leave it loaded, it'll draw a little blue trail behind me, just like is up on this one. So let me know if that that trips your trigger. Um, I think I think that'll take care of that. Oh, a donut hole program helps to collimate. That's interesting. Uh, I might take you up on that. That seems good. Uh, divide total wattage by 750. Yeah. Um, 
the total wattage was also not amazingly apparent. Uh, it does say here, though, engine power 605 slash 451 kilowatts uh, of, of motor capacity. Uh, Augusto asks, where am I going to sleep in a hotel? Uh, so Rusty's RV ranch has two rental cabins and, uh, I'm going to be sleeping in one of those. They've already cleaned it and everything. Uh, it's ready for me to show up. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where I'm sleeping. My original plan actually was to sleep in the Astro shed. Um, but then I was told, no, I'm, I'm making use of a cabin and, um, I also looked at the weather and realized it's hot. <laughs> so sleeping in the Astro shed would have, and, well, okay. It's hot in the day and it's cold at night, cold. So, uh, it would not have necessarily been a pleasant experience, although I could have made it work if a cabin had not been available. Uh, Kevin. Okay. Thanks. Just wanting to know where you, where you'd been and going. Gotcha. So Kevin, yeah. Um, it won't, when you load up that, that map on the other page, it will only draw in from here forward. Uh, so it won't show you the trail before, but, um, I started in Las Vegas, Nevada, and I'm going to rodeo New Mexico. Uh, so if you want to throw that in Google maps and I'm followed the route that Google suggested for that trip. So that's, pretty much spot on with small deviations just to the superchargers along the path. But uh, I appreciate your curiosity. <laughs> and it scales to fit your donut so you can be sure it's centered versus trying to eyeball it. Oh, interesting. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I would, yeah, I'll take a look at that, Dennis. I, I uh, if you mo don't mind throwing that on a thumb drive, I would, I would like to uh, check it out and see how it works. Is Annie's open? No idea. Uh, where's Annie's? I'm not, I don't recall an Annie's. Oh, no, still don't recall an Annie's. So let me know where that would be. right behind me at the exit. Uh, hard to say. Uh, I will try to get a look on the way out. Ah, that is something I need to change. I can do that while I'm sitting here doing nothing. Now that I know how to collimate, which I already knew, but I didn't know I knew because it came with adapters that were confusing. Turns out the adapters are really only absolutely required for changing the primary to secondary mirror spacing. And I've not changed the secondary mirror location or spacing. Thus, it is highly unlikely that I need to tweak that. So that is good. I might be a bit punchy. Table ID chat table. Need to make that 100% width. Maybe with some border and centered. Mm. I'm 
try that. Oh, that's another interesting thing. I haven't been able to deploy changes going this way. I wonder if it'll work better if I do it this way. And a loss of my gun look. Let me. Evidently, they didn't need much charge to get where they're going. Ooh, a white Model Y. Very nice. Oh, I also can remove the speed from my Tesla output since I figured that out on the other part. Oh, that's not in this area. It's in this area. You guys still chatting over here? Google says it's a wine store now. Oh, yeah. Big Tex barbecue. Real good. Okay. Um, I'll keep that in mind for future trips. It would be sad if they had to shut down. Is that the one in the caboose? <laughs> Is that the one in your caboose? to check what data I was getting from the supercharger as the other part. Yep. I'm already making use of all that. Yay, that worked. Sweet. Refresh. Oh, no, that's too wide. Oh, why is that too wide? <laughs> Rich and Sue, where's the... Yeah, the fuel game. Uh, unfortunately, the stop time for the charging is an arbitrary time picked by me, so uh, it's not really fair to use charge time. <laughs> but hey, thanks. Uh, here, I'll, I'll I'll make you famous, YouTube famous. Not really. I'm not that famous. So yeah, sorry, Rich and Sue. Uh, it'd be a tough. 
<laughs> yep, I'm ro rolling in the Tesla uh, for this trip. So uh, my fuel is electricity, electrons. Yay, I like that. Whoop whoop. <laughs> oh, I was going to look at the Python Tesla API. Uh, I got to figure out how to turn my search back to. English. I don't know if that. Because I'm not in Hong Kong. Damn it. Stop redirecting me to Hong Kong. Oh, nope. Don't want to do that. Oh, so we've added 124 miles already sitting here. Huh. I do like the Model Y. It's a snazzy looking vehicle. I'm guessing, yeah, Tesla Pi, I think, is the one that's used for this. So David and Brenda are hitting the road tomorrow. And you can watch their live stream on David's channel starting at 11 a.m. Central Time.
Hey, JB. Welcome back. Senor Belletti. Yes. Uh, I am charging my last charge stop in Wilcox, Arizona. And um, once I'm here, done here, it'll be another hour and 14 minutes to Rusty's. And then the work begins. Yay. Range 140. Yeah, see that? I'd really like to get that updating more frequently. I, you know, I can do it with an internal connector, but uh, I forgot to grab it. Jim asks, will I be pulling a work all nighter? No. Um, I should be able to get everything done in fairly short order once I arrive. Um, and then be able to get to bed at a relatively normal time. And yeah, I should be all right. Worst case scenario, I'm still going to go to bed at a relatively normal time as long as I get the optical side of stuff done that I need to do. And then uh, tomorrow morning when I get up, I'll finish up in the shed before I hit the road. Tesla camping. No. So um, Rusty has uh, cabin rentals. And so I'm going to be staying in one of her two rental cabins. Interesting. Hey, thank you, sir. Uh, streaming from the shed. I believe so. Yeah. Um, that's kind of the plan at this point. Uh, it'll be a little different. I'm going to be using my DJI Pocket 2, I think. I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet. I, I think I might use the Pocket 2 uh, to do the YouTube stream inside the shed. It'll make me a little more mobile without having to drag the laptop around uh, as long yeah 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 that's that's the plan right now so by doing that then I can grab the pocket too and move it over ah dang I didn't bring my H, my uh, USB-C extension let me think about that yeah I don't have a USB-C extension that's unfortunate. I should have grabbed that cable. Um, so without the USB-C extension, I have to have the phone directly coupled, hard coupled to the side of the camera, um, which is a bit unwieldy unless you have a stand for doing that. And I don't have a stand for doing that. Uh, but I did have a USB extension cable that, or a USB-C extension cable, let me be clear. And I plugged it into the side of the camera and then plugged it into the phone. And that worked out great when I played with it before, but the one freaking cable I forgot to bring with me. And Rich and Sue are going to be riding along with David tomorrow. Awesome.
Hmm. Evidently, vehicle dot location is just what you need. Wow, sleeping five seconds. Man, I wonder if that. I wonder if that actually works, and doesn't fill up the var log partition. Cool. Uh, catch you later, Jim. Thanks for stopping in, and maybe we'll see you later. So the Tesla API for communicating with the vehicle over the air uh, is not, it's not an official API. It's not documented for external use. But a lot of people have figured out what the API roughly is and how to make use of it. Um, there, the problem with it originally was each API query would put a log entry on the storage in the micro or in the uh, center console and that was problematic because the log was not rotated frequently enough and if you were querying say every 15 seconds don't know who would do that um, you would fill up the var log partition Linux speak You'd fill up a disk, and uh, the center console would crash. You'd have to reboot it, force reboot it, and then it would wipe out the partition and work again until you filled it up again, which didn't take very long, a couple of days. Um, there was a secondary API that was for location-specific, like when you're using the app, looking at the location of the vehicle, it's a stream so it, it just you'd say hey I want the stream and it says okay here's the stream and then it just feeds you the coordinates like every second or two um, and that was a more efficient way to get the location data without filling up the var log partition but they've changed things a lot since then and now uh, they've introduced a new API process, a new token process, and uh, two revisions of the sender console area. So I don't know if, number one, I don't know if filling the var partition, the log partition, is still a thing. And number two, I don't know if that stream API still exists because of the changes they've made to it. Any hoozle. So that's. Ooh, here's the streaming. This page is empty. Okay, well, that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to have to look into this more and maybe ping some buddies at Tesla and ask some questions before I start interrogating it every five seconds like this guy proposed doing. Uh, so, Dennis asked, what cable do I need? I, he probably has one. So I need a USB-C, USB Type-C extension cable. So it'll be a female USB-C on one end and a male USB-C on the other. Um, it's not as common as regular USB extenders, but they do exist. And I got mine on Amazon. It's like a six-footer, and it worked works pretty well. Um, so I'm not going to be surprised if you don't have a USB-C extension cable. But if you do, that would be great.
I need to wipe the screen off. It's dusty. Keyboard wasn't exactly immaculate either. Okay, that's better. Still getting 56 kilowatts, 164 miles of range per hour of charge, and I've added 169 miles. I'm up to 206 miles of range at this particular moment. Come on now. Ooh, I also need to eat at some point. Yeah, that'd be good. Um, I've been snacking all day, aside from breakfast. Breakfast, I had a very nummy, nummy, nummy omelet made by my lovely darling wife, Lynn But that was many, many hours ago. Evidently, I can get just the drive state, and it will respond with the GPS coordinates, heading, power, which should be interesting, speed, and shifter state. That might be the ticket, if I can query that. But again, I feel like it's... I feel like it's at risk of blowing up the SD log file. Or the EMMC's far log. Really need to get this Chinese or the yeah Chinese. It's Hong Kong. All right, I'm switching Speedify servers away from LA because for whatever reason the LA server I'm on makes everything think I'm in Hong Kong. So. Uh, still hasn't restarted upload yet. Oh, building, building. Is it going to make it? Yeah, there we go. Now we're cooking with Crisco again. Let's see if I can get out of Hong Kong now. Hey, hey, I'm back in the U.S. again. Beautiful. Looks like... Ooh, yes. Ha ha, found the streaming API documentation. Yeah, cool. Um, I may be able to mess with this more later. Ooh, WebSocket Streaming API. Even better.
Looks like it's deprecated. Maybe not. April of 2020 looks good. Uh oh. Well, that's no bueno. Oh. Damn it. I'll be back if you can hear me. Oh, hey, you can't hear me. I'm back. <laughs> Things locked up for a minute. I thought I was going to have to hard power down, and as soon as I touched the power button, everything came back to life. So, uh, oops. Okay, yeah, I'm still live. Why for the live chat not work? That's weird. Ah, there's the chat. Okay, so... Dennis, 10-foot uh, USB-C to USB-C. If it's male, female, oh, USB-C to USB. Uh, I, too, have one of said things. I might be able to make that work. And if I do, if I can, I, I, have, I have one of those. That's a good idea. I can give that a shot. Um, am I still streaming or is this a new one? I, I think you mean, will I still be streaming? Well, okay. So let me cover all the bases. I'm still streaming the live drive right now. I have about an hour and 14 minutes of drive time left. I'm waiting for supercharging to get me up really high in my charge range so that I need to do less charging at Rusty's while I'm there, if I need to do any at all, to get me back here so I can supercharge again before I go south into Arizona. Um, I plan on streaming the work I do in my observatory. It'll be on this channel, probably not this stream, because it's not a live drive. It's live work, not a live drive. So I'll probably create a new stream just for that. Uh, if you're subscribed and get notifications, you'll see that pop up. Um, Jim B, 8-inch extension cable. Yeah, that's a little short. It might work. Anyway, I think the 10-footer I have in combination with other thingies I have with me should help. So that's a good idea. I will attempt to make use of that. I think we'll be fine. Oh, yeah, fine without the chains. <laughs> Too much excitement for John. Hey, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thanks for sticking around with me for so long this evening. Uh... And uh, looks like you dropped off just a, just a minute or so ago. So, hey, thanks for sticking around. Really appreciate it.
12 concurrent viewers right now. Oh my gosh. Man, you guys must be bored watching me supercharge. Here, I'll tell you what. Let me change the view. Ta-da! Oh, it didn't do it because it's on uh, studio mode. There we go. Ta-da! New view! You can see out the back. <laughs> I can give you side views, too, if you're really getting bored. I probably should add those so I can switch to them, but whatever. As of right this second, it's less than critical. Hey, Pete Hall's here. Thank you, sir. That glad you stopped by. You were here earlier, too, I believe. I'm pretty sure. Had to go to a truck race in Richmond. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Interesting. Truck race in Richmond. I got to get some snack in me because talking about food just moments ago, it really hit me all of a sudden. Yeah, I'll just grab some cashews. That'll hold me over till I get to Rusty's. This is like slow TV, but less entertaining. I will caution this next leg of the trip, especially after I start south on New Mexico 80, uh, about six miles down, the cell signal is going to go completely to crap unless they've changed things. Um, so it's likely the stream will cut out about 20 minutes before I get to Rusty's. And then once I get to Rusty's, it may come back on at that point, and I'll try to sign off or something from there. And then once I get out to the shed, because I'm going to go into the cabin first, then once I get out to the shed, I'll uh, start up a stream out there. Oh, I don't need a cable to stream. I can do it wirelessly somehow. Yeah, I can do it wirelessly. Okay, crisis averted. I don't need a cable to be able to stream live with the DJI Pocket 2. It'll configure it wirelessly from the phone to the Pocket 2. Then the Pocket 2 will jump on Wi-Fi and do its own stream. Perfect. Crisis averted. And I can charge it while it's streaming, so I can keep that going. Perfect.
Okay. I'm up to the general range of my normal top end of my charge. And I know, matter of fact, let me change the limit to the day trip limit. Yeah, five minutes left. Okay. Um, in that five minutes, I'm going to run and use the restroom. So keep an eye on my stuff for me. I'm going to leave the mic hot. There we go. Now we're back in the stream. He's got a charger. Actually, sorry, challenger. RT. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, it definitely is. Wilcox is just uh, the epicenter of excitement. Uh, let's see. Am I sleeping in the car or the shed? Pete asks. Uh, I'm actually sleeping in a rental cabin at Rusty's. Uh, if you go to rustysrvranch.com, you can uh, look at the rental cabins that she has. She has two of them, so I'm taking one tonight, so I uh, can't have that one. AC's on in the cabin. Um, interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure. It, it should have turned off, but I'm wondering if maybe I moved the laptop in just a special way that made it... Um, ah, screw it made the seat think that there was an occupant uh, so maybe that's why it kept the AC on and Mark and Dennis are saying hello and Augusto has a spinny oh Evidently, my stream is not doing its thingy. Oh, now it's back. Okay, good. Okay. But my chat was, isn't coming up. I need to refresh my chat. So bear with. gonna work no nope, that no work huh does 
Does that work? Nope. That don't work either. I wonder if... Oh, well. No chat overlay. Maybe it'll come back later. Um, Any hoozle. I can still see chats as they come in. I just can't overlay them on the chat or on the live stream right this very moment. Oh, I need to have this navigate. Drive for 53.7 miles. 53 miles to my exit. Oh, and it says if I round trip it, I'll have 20% when I get back to the supercharger. So that's convenient. really odd on the chat overlay. It had been working so well for so long. So we should have decent bandwidth between here and uh, like I said, about 20 minutes north of Rodeo when I'm dropping down in that area. Um, so I got 51 miles to Road Forks, which is the exit. Uh, it's exit number five in New Mexico coming across I-10. And I'll be right back on this stretch of road tomorrow. Uh, this will be the path I take heading over to see uh, Mark, who is uh, Lima WMS in chat. Maybe while I'm there, I'll help him change his name in there. <laughs> so it's not Lima WMS, Lima WMS. Right, Mark? Oh, man, somebody didn't like my tech reading. Dang. After all that work I put into it, too. Oh, well. Can't please everybody. I bet I know what the issue is. I bet the browser... Yeah, so the, the way I'm bringing the chat in is through a browser... Um, source in OBS, if anybody out there knows OBS, and um, I bet when I hit the button and accidentally almost shut down the computer, I bet that killed that browser task, and now it's not relaunching for whatever reason. Uh, so, what I'm going to do is intentionally kill the stream for just a moment. Uh, so I will be back. I'm going to stop the stream and exit OBS, and then I will come back. And that may, might, hopefully could potentially fix the chat overlay. So I'll be right back. Hey, hey, hey. Look at there. Fixed it. Power of deduction. And you know what, Phil? Man, haters gonna hate, right? Can't can't please everybody all the time. There we go. 
<laughs> For half a second, I was worried it wasn't going to remove the chat. Man, the soap in that bathroom was uh, the heavy antibacterial like they use in hospitals. Woo! It has a fragrance like that that hard antibiotic soap smell. Uh, but it was a much cleaner bathroom than any of the rest I've been on on this trip. Uh, I just didn't need to do anything esoteric while I was in there. So, So, Phil, how many thumbs ups are on the stream, though? That's that's maybe the more important question. I'm gonna go ahead and get past this guy because his exhaust is horrible, smelling. I didn't have a uh, bioweapon mode. Yes, Teslas, some of them do have a bioweapon defense mode on the ventilation system. So, David asks, actually David states, he's ready for departure. And he asks, uh, how long to go? And uh, it is 43 minutes to Road Forks, or 43 miles to Road Forks, and then uh, about 20 miles south from there. So let's see here. I slide that down. 57 minutes total left on the drive today. Thank you, sir. Appreciates that. <laughs> Rich and Sue was not me. Oh, well. Yes, 230 miles of range. Um, so I got plenty of range. It says if I round trip it and come right back to the charging station there, that the round trip will be, I'll end up with 20% left once I get there. Um, so depending on how many hoops I need to jump through to plug in the Tesla, I may not even plug it in while I'm at Rusty's. I just don't know what the option is um, for plugging in the car while I'm staying in the rental cabin. Uh, when are we leaving Las Vegas? Uh, by the end of May, Augusto, we have reservations in Kentucky at uh, on June 4th, so we will leave at least by the end of May so that we can make it to Kentucky by June 4th. Uh, depending on the state of the astronomy shed here, uh, if, if I need to repaint it before the summer, then we may leave Las Vegas a week ahead of schedule just so I've got time to come down and paint the shed, but we shall see. And uh, yes, Phil, I do believe David asked, are we there yet? <laughs> yes, yes, you did, David. Not in those words, but you, 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 were, you were right up in there. Yeah, I don't. I don't think Rusty will care. Uh, I just don't know 
what plugs are available there at that specific cabin. So there may not be an outside plug that's easy to use for charging that will give me anything significant on the charge anyway. Um, so that's why I'm saying I don't know if I'll plug in while I'm there. There, If she has an RV site open, then uh, especially if it's the one right next to the cabin, then I'll definitely plug in there uh, and pay pay her for the electric. But um, we'll see. Yes. Uh, now my there it finally came up, and my bandwidth's crapped. Yes, Augusto, it is a long trip. Um, I think it's rated at like nine hours. Oh, you mean from Las Vegas to Kentucky? Yes, that is a very long trip. That's four or five days. I don't remember how we have it planned out. Um, but yes, that one is going to be a very long trip. Wow, there's a big dust, dust devil, dirt devil up there. I don't know if it comes through in the video or not, but I'll tell you when I'm passing when it's passing the right edge of that green sign right now and the left side of the green sign right now it's off to the right hand side up here uh, it extends quite extensively up into the air You know, all in all, I don't think the uh, data has been super bad for this trip, considering I don't have four antennas and three different carriers on five different connections. Um, I think it's done all right. If I had a, if I had, had had a Verizon in the link or in the mix, it would have helped. So Rich and Sue asked, "What is my update on Starlink?" Uh, so Elon is saying full mobile they're targeting this year for full, full mobile uh, ability. Uh, you can already, as a Starlink customer, go into your uh, account on the portal and move your uh, <laughs> move your account. Uh, but the trick is they have to have service for the address you're going to, and they have to have capacity for that cell as well. Otherwise, they won't enable it. Um, they're launching more and more satellites all the time. They're doing about 120 a month. So their capacity is going to greatly increase fairly quickly. And with that, later this year, hopefully it'll be available all over the country uh, for use. Now, they're also talking about making mobile operable hardware. So the hardware that's out right now, sure, it's easy enough to relocate from one spot to another. Uh, but it's not, you can't have it active while you're driving down the road. The, um, it, it just stops. As soon as you move it, it stops and has to reorient itself and figure things out again. So they are working on a full mobile operation, uh, like RV top uh, style operation. And uh, a couple of people chimed in on the last tech chat that I did with David that that is going to require um, a professional installation because it's mobile two-way satellite communication service which is fine by me I I'm happy to pay one time to get that installed if that's required uh, let's see oh well man really glad you passed me there just to slow down in front of me anyway um, let's see we have another couple of questions here uh, yep, David uh, updating Augusto. They're leaving tomorrow for a three-day drive from Texas to New York. And uh, Brian, I wish, kind of. That's a long way out of the way, so probably not, though. <laughs> and there's not a lot of uh, RV services down there, at least not that I would have access to that I'm aware of. Um... Phil says, you have to change your address before you move or it won't work. Huh. I was not aware of that. 
Uh, I had not seen that anywhere, but that's interesting and almost kind of makes sense because I and I actually asked Starlink this in a, um, a support ticket, but they didn't really answer the question. I was curious if they could activate service in a new cell just from the satellite itself or if they needed to make an update on Dishy, which is the, the big satellite dish that, well, I say big, it's small, relatively. Um, that is the, the Starlink user terminal, the part that I have. Um, let me get past this guy so he can move over. There we go. Um, and let's see. But yeah, it makes it's interesting uh, because I contended that it's possible they need to be able to send new configuration data to Dishy on a cell that it's already active in. And if that's the case, that's going to suck because my cell that I'm active in is in Montana, and I don't plan on being in Montana this year. <laughs> so I, I'm hoping I'm hoping that can be rectified. Uh, let's see. Brian says there are about five big parks within 10 miles of Starbase. Wow. Uh, that's interesting. I'll have to look more deeply into that. Maybe next winter. Maybe that's where we'll winter next year. That'd be pretty kick-ass. Um, but yeah, uh, that's certainly not going to be on the plan for the summer, unfortunately. Yeah, so David, as Brian said, if, if there's a configuration that has to be changed on the dish itself to make it aware that it needs to be active in the new cell, then that may be why you have to do it before you move. Uh, but again, I'm really hoping that is not the case. Matter of fact, I'm probably going to open a support ticket to ask them that, unless it's documented someplace. Actually, you know what? It's interesting. I don't know that that's accurate, Brian, because I remember reading when I was going through, because I checked a bunch of addresses in my account, Las Vegas, Rodeo, Kentucky, New York, all the places I would be in the next coming months, and it specifically said, be sure to have your dish set up at your new location before you submit the request, because the service will stop almost immediately when you submit the request. So that order of sentence structure makes me think that it does not need to be done before you leave. It has to be done, they expect it to be done after you get there, in theory. I don't think that's definitive, but I'm pretty, like, 80% sure I read those words in that order on their site before, as I was testing these addresses. Anyway, it's all up in the air right now and subject to change, so you never know. Oh, that is very interesting, Phil. Um, I'm glad to know that. That's very cool. Yeah, I'm going to have to check into that. Um, I will say, Phil, that uh, we we travel a bit heavier than most. 45-foot uh, coach, 24-foot car hauler, um, Tesla. So we tend to do a lot of recon before we go to an area, a new park, just to make sure we'll fit. Uh, so we'll have to see. Uh, it is currently several YouTube videos shown it to be true, at least if that is your only connectivity. Okay. Yeah. 
I see that I don't know that whole part about if that's your only connectivity I mean I have cellular backup redundancy but historically they've not been able to send me any updates that I could apply through like my cell phone into the system um, anyway yeah it's all subject to change Un unfortunately nothing is in stone uh, so we'll see what would you guess on how far out for RV use oh for the general RV user um man that's a good question I would say I would feel fairly confident in by the end of the year uh, maybe not mobile use but certainly relocatable use I would say by the end of the year even Elon time and Tesla time and SpaceX time um, I think that's probably a, a reasonable guess Brian says the RV parks there are big rig friendly that is good to know winter sounds more and more possible down there I don't know how cold it gets but it's Gulf Coast so how cold could it get although they did just have multiple days of winter storm that knocked out the entire place so guess with uh, climate change who knows but certainly good to know and uh, I'll, I'll be checking that out Um, Phil or Brian, sorry, I can't remember which of you were saying that um, it's changed before you move type thing. Uh, if you could, can you tell me what YouTuber uh, did a video on it that showed it? Um, if it was mobile internet guys, uh, Chris and Cherie, then I'll I'll be sure to be I'll I'll know to catch that one, but. If it was somebody else that said something about that, I, I'd like to check out the video. You can post YouTube channel names and chat easily. Uh, yeah, reserve soon. Absolutely. Uh, wherever you plan to be sometime in the next year, use that address and put in a reservation. Um, because it's they're only going to open it up to people who have reservations and the earlier you, you get the reservation in the earlier you get the dish uh, so yeah that that is a huge I would absolutely agree with that uh, next summer they might be ready using the oil derricks for launches Wow yeah who knows that's Okay, cool. So Phil's looking for it now. It might have been uh, Chris and Cherie. Um, I'll have to check that out. Um, would I suggest holding off on buying something like the Mophie 4500, Sim 7, and get buy with a cell hotspot until then <sighs> that's tough um, so here's the, the catch Starlink the dish requires a completely different means of sky access than current satellites that everybody's used to so you know your uh, direct TV or dish network you point them stationary and you can even if you move just right and shoot between two tree limbs then you've got good signal and you're good Starlink is not that Starlink requires a open view of a huge circle of sky tilted slightly north matter of fact you can download the app on your phone right now Starlink app on iOS or Android and go into the uh, check my sky or something there's a little section it'll be obvious once you get in there you, it may even be you you click this setup button before you and then it'll 
put you to it. But you can actually point it up, and it uses your camera and the, the uh, sensors in your phone to show you what oval of the sky needs to be clear. If there's anything in that area of sky, tree limb, leaf, um, telephone pole, whatever, there's a good chance you're going to have an outage as the Starlink satellite passes overhead across that obstruction. Um, matter of fact, if it does, you will have an outage. It may only be a few seconds. It may be 30 seconds to a minute, depending on the size of the blockage. But uh, it, it does require that full space to be open. Now, as they get more satellites up and get more capacity, there might be an ability to hand off to a secondary satellite to cover if you have that type of situation. I don't know yet. Um, so for right now, if you plan to go anywhere that's forested in any way, shape, or form, you probably need some other means of internet access. So I would say with that in mind, I would probably still get whatever cellular thing you're you're thinking about, whether it's a Mophie or a Pep Wave or whatever, and have it as a backup at a minimum, if not your primary for some locations. You'll always want to back up to Starlink, good cell setup now. Yes, exactly. Um, I, I agree with that. Now, I may ditch some of my cell carriers. I may ditch some of the lines that I have because, you know, I'm I'm upwards of five $600 a month. I hope nobody heard me say that uh, for my cellular connectivity. So, actually, it's not that bad, I think. Cellular, under 200. Uh, let's call it 400. 350, 400 dollars um, for my cellular connectivity. So it would be nice to get rid of some of those that I don't need after Starlink is more readily available. But especially too, until they get all the capacity online you may hit areas where you may have been two months ago and you left and activated your dish someplace else and then the capacity is now exceeded where you just came from and even though you were there two months ago and you come back you may not be able to activate until they get enough capacity <laughs> oh, thank you Rich and Sue uh, I'm not sure I'm Obi-Wan but uh, I'm certainly uh, on my way, giving it the old the old college try. Uh, three connectivity tools are minimum if you rely on being online. Uh, yeah, I don't know if if you're counting three as three potentially three different carriers, then sure. Um, I certainly have multiple carriers, multiple contracts. And then um, I also have Wi-Fi if I need it. But I will tell you right now, I never, with one exception, never use Wi-Fi. The one exception was at Burleson where um, uh, da David and Brenda are right now and leaving. Because I know I, I helped set up that Wi-Fi and David still manages the Wi-Fi. And so I get to have access. Um, so that's the only place where I, I do use it. Um, the only other time I even stand up my Wi-Fi gear is at Rusty's because I can get a direct link to my astronomy shed from the RV site and uh, you know work as if I'm local in the shed on the network instead of going out over the Internet. Phil, yes, somebody. That, that, that is the somebody I met. <laughs> I'm talking a lot, my uh, voice is 
No, don't do that. Jeez Louise. Man, it really wants to move over there. Now the thing, the problem is, like the guy towing that trailer thought I was an asshole because he didn't know the car was trying to do it, not me. So even though I canceled the turn signal. Unless she's listening right now, Phil, I also haven't had the opportunity to mention to her that I scratched up my really nice expensive sunglasses that I've protected so well for so long. They've outlasted any other pair I've ever had, so at least there's that, I guess. But I don't know if they make these anymore. I don't know. They're carbon fiber frames, so they're relatively light. And they have um, better side coverage. I'm sure I'll find something. <laughs> yeah, so I'm I'm pretty close to what you got there, Brian. Um, I have a grandfathered unlimited Verizon plan. I have a prepaid unlimited Verizon plan. I have two Mobileys and an unlimited AT&T, or I'm sorry, an unlimited T-Mobile. Uh, and then, yeah, Wi-Fi. So, yeah, I just have one more Verizon than you do. I did have two additional AT&Ts. I had two Togos, uh, but those died uh, November-ish of last year so yep the Togos were a, a limited deal I will say David got really lucky um, David uh, actually renewed his Togo before the expiry and it kept going with the unlimited so that was pretty cool uh, have you found out if the heater can be switched off yet, or is it always... Oh, um, it does lower its power usage once it gets connected. The dish is really high power usage when it's not connected because it thinks maybe it has to thaw itself out. Rich and Sue, so impressed with your astronomy knowledge. Uh, what would you say you have invested in all you have? Oh my gosh. Why would you ask me that, Rich and Sue? <laughs> um, so I can tell you in the observatory alone, uh, okay, so astronomy gear by itself, not including any of the computers, the observatory or the observatory electronics or power systems or anything else just the ast the astronomy gear itself ballpark 30,000 ballpark um, now actually I'll take that back that's new value my investment is closer to 24,000 because I got a really good deal on the telescope so yeah um, then the observatory, I probably have another ten to twelve thousand in. Um, the gear that bounces down the highway with me in the coach is another. Uh, we'll call it fifteen thousand. Jeez, Louise, why'd you ask me that question? I hope my wife's not watching. <laughs> taking that, taking that uh, off screen now. If I have signal to do so. Ah, there we went. Woo. So yeah, I reached into it. I made it expensive. Um, you can get started in astronomy relatively inexpensively. Um, you know, sub 
sub a thousand dollars, you can be doing something. You want to come over, buddy? Um, so yeah, you can get you can get started sub a thousand dollars and have something decent to look at. <laughs> a budget of eighty-two thousand. <laughs> yeah, you're you're set. I think you can you can get something made up for that. Um, there was actually an astronomer on the Astro Imaging Channel on YouTube did a talk about building his observatory about two weeks back, I think it was, and he has in that neighborhood of cost, but it's an add-on to his house, so he made it like his house and everything else, and he made a, he got a huge dome, um, uh, so yeah, yeah, Augusto, that's, <laughs> it, it is definitely, um, definitely a lot of money, so you can make it really expensive, or you can, you know, you can get by with, uh, your existing DSLR and, under a thousand dollars in telescope gear and you're you're good to go yeah <laughs> yeah astronomy fans becoming boat fans yeah <laughs> yeah I've heard that saying quite a bit a hole in the water you pour money into astronomy is definitely in that realm as well so we have by the way, we have only 3.9 miles left to the exit. I moved over because the guy's uh, dolly that he's towing the truck on went off the edge of the road, and that kicks up a lot of rocks and stuff. And so I, w I want it over out of that just in case. Definitely with the $82,000, you could buy a new Tesla. Uh, I guess, yeah, actually with the money between what I have in the observatory and what I have, yes. But keep in mind, too, that, that money, like, I didn't just up in one day write a check for that and take it all home, right? I mean, that's built up a lot over time. Um, yeah, built up a lot over time. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Rich and Sue. We'll see you soon. Uh, I'm going to be streaming what I'm doing inside the observatory today as well. Uh, it'll be a different stream, but on the same channel. So uh, if you're bored later tonight and, and want to see me do more fun stuff with astronomy, uh, yeah, join in. I think I'm going to go chill behind this guy because I'll be getting off this exit up here. Then I'll have another... Wow, that's really horrible. Ah! Oh, that's not what I meant to hit. Uh, 24 minutes. <laughs> My astronomy shed is a Tesla. Yeah, that's that's not far off. It does have two Tesla battery modules in it, so, you know. And now 
uh, we're heading south toward rodeo. Woo! May I, may I come into that a little hot? 45 up here. All right, so here in about uh, six-ish minutes or so, my cell is going to drop out. So uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you from the shed here in a little bit. Kind of losing my voice, so I may need to uh, gargle some warm salt water or something. day. Yes, long drive day. 10 hours, 13 minutes thus far per the stream time. Oh, nice. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, yeah, cool. And only uh, 20 miles left, 22 miles left. <laughs> I don't normally talk this much in a day. And yes, you can even ask Lynn that. I don't normally talk this much in a day. Hey, David. Uh, yeah, no problem. Thanks for uh, riding along with me. And, uh, yeah, good luck on being able to get back down to Rusty's. If you're, if you're here this fall, we may run into you. Um, if I don't paint the shed before we go back east, I'm almost certainly going to have to paint it when we come back west and I ran out of the uh, the finish that they used from the factory on the excuse me on the building and they don't make that shade anymore so at a minimum I'm probably gonna have to repaint the whole thing which is unfortunate So the speed limit right now is 55. I'm using autopilot, so it's limiting me to 60. But up here, in a ways, it goes to 60, I think, or 65. I think it goes to 60. <laughs> David says he'll recognize it no matter what shade it is, what color it is. His RV is the one with the crows on the side out by the solar panels. Oh, okay. <laughs> I definitely will, David. I'll let I'll uh, wave on my way by. Uh, yeah, I mean, David, I I could hire someone to paint it, but then I'd have to trust someone to do the same job or better than I would, and then I'd be pissed off when they didn't do the same job or better than I would. Um, not that I'm a fabulous painter by any stretch, but. I, yeah, I have issues. Actually, I have whole subscriptions, not just issues. <laughs> Building, build a painting robot this summer. Yeah, no, I think I'll skip that one. I have, uh, as Lynn Ann would attest, I have too many micro obsessions as it is. I don't, I don't need to get into painting robots. Yeah, David, I, I think we'll likely end up down here this fall anyway, 
So, I don't know. It, it's all up in the air at this point. It's We don't really know yet. Looks like, yeah, I think uh, the clouds might blow out by the time I'm needing to uh, see some sky. Yes, David, micro-obsessions. Astronomy, thankfully, has been a, well, maybe not thankfully. Astronomy, since I've invested so much money in it, thankfully, is a what I would call a macro-obsession. So uh, at least it's continued to hold my attention. Man, I got out at the supercharger and the the sun was hitting the wheels on the driver's side, and there is a boatload of brake dust. Um, a little shocked, actually. <laughs> yeah, Mark, uh, surprised you haven't heard that one before. Um, I think you know what I'm talking about, though. You, I'm sure you have subscriptions, too, buddy. Yeah, David, I uh, hope, uh, hope everything goes well on the trip. And uh, I'll check in on you from time to time between fits and starts. Yes, speed limit 60 now. Um, so I'll check in on you guys, see how you're doing. By the way, I'm getting ready to come up on Granite Gap. Uh, let's see, Augusto, is this the longest trip I've ever done with the Tesla? Uh, the first time I've done this trip. So this will be the third, um, third round trip that I've done with the Tesla from Vegas to Rodeo. Um, twice in this direction, so Vegas to Rodeo back to Vegas, and once from Rodeo to Vegas back to Rodeo. Yeah, Mark, I, I that's that's a good continuation. I like that. You own the whole mag the magazine business. <laughs> So if you if I have signal enough coming over uh, through Granite Gap up here, man, it is beautiful. But it, that's usually right where it drops out, and it looks like I'm already starting to drop out. So we'll see when I get up here. But uh, oh, you know what? I don't think Speedify is running right now. Oh yeah, it's been running in the background. Okay. Um, so yeah, if, if I have enough signal for you to see it when I get up here, it, it is really an impressive sight coming through the gap and then the valley opening out below. It's really cool. I don't think this video would ever do it justice, even if you can see it, but it's... And it's right up there. I see green on my status bubble. Oh, thank you, birdie. There was a bird flying out. Luck, lucky he was on a kamikaze mission. I doth not like to hit birdies or anything else. Yeah, you can see the gap straight ahead between like where the road goes right through that cut. That's what I'm talking about. So we'll see if uh, hopefully the cell signal holds up. Let's 
So far, so good. Hello. I believe I'm back. Guess who's back? Back again. Here at Rusty's. Tell a friend. So, I made it. Uh, yes, the internet was horrible for that whole stretch. As soon as I crested through the gap, nothing. Pretty much the whole rest of the time. So, uh, but I'm here. And uh, it's good to be here. And now make a U-turn to stay on the RV. No, 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 no. I'm not not making a U-turn. Um. So yeah, I'm gonna pull on up to spot number twenty-one and throw a few things in the building, and then head on out to the observatory, where I will be starting my modification blitz. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, so I, oh, looks like I already signed off. <laughs> I was going to say, if you can hear me, I will sign off for now and I will, uh, get things going again once I'm over at the shed. I'm back online now. So if you can still hear me, I'm going to sign off for now. Thank you, everybody, for watching, sticking around, having fun. Um, and, uh, yeah, I will get another stream going when I get out to the shed here in just a few moments. So thanks. Bye.